if you are a absolute beginner in python this is the perfect video just for you you will know everything you need to learn about python and not only that you will build five cool simple projects to implement all these fun features of python so let's get started Hi everyone, welcome back to the Python Cash Course for Absolute Beginner by Knowledge Doctor. I am Mishuddha Chandu and I am super excited to be an instructor of this course. So in this course, you're going to learn Python from basic to advanced. And also at the last of the video, we are going to do five projects. So if you're a beginner, you don't know what is Python, you can also follow this course because I'm trying to make you pro. So without any further ado, so let's get started. So what is Python? So Python is a very popular general purpose interpreted and interactive and also object-oriented and high-level programming language. It was created by Guido von Rossum during the 1985 to 1990. So Python is very popular right now because of machine learning library like TensorFlow, Keras, OpenCV and so on. So let's see the agenda for this course. What are you going to cover on this course? So this is the agenda for this course. So first we are going to discuss about the first Python program like Hello World. Then we are going to discuss about the variable data type and data input. Then operators in Python and string manipulations with some exercise, list, tuple, sets, and the dictionary. So the four are nothing but called the data structure in Python. Then we are going to discuss about the conditional logic like if, else, and else if. Then we are going to discuss about some loops like for loops and while loops and going to solve some problems. Then we are going to discuss about the functions in Python and we are going to discussing all the types of functions that how can we use in Python. Then you also see that how can you handle the file, how can you read the file, how can you write the file and also we are going to handle the exceptions in files. Then we are going to discuss about the OS module that is in operating system module then also the date time module. So this is the agenda for the full course. At the last of the video we are going to discussing about the five projects. You're going to build it from the scores and for beginner to medium level. So now let's see the careers with Python. So if you learn Python, what are the benefits of that? First one is a game developer. You can develop some game using the Python. The second one is hot topic right now, machine learning engineer, data scientist, depth ops engineer, data analyst, and also the software engineer. So if you learn Python smartly, you can choose any of them and make your career. But my personal request, go for machine learning. So now, without any further ado, so let's get started. First love, first touch, and first Python program you can't forget. By the way, now we are going to write our first Python program. So that first we are actually using our Python shell and later on we use our base code. So for that, you need to open your command prompt. You can use one shortcut key, Windows R, and type here the CMD and enter. And you can type here Python. And you can see here the version of Python is right now 3.8.5 that I am using. You can use Python 3.9 or 3.10, okay? So now we are going to do the coding here the for the Python chain and later on we are going to do the coding on, on editor that's called BS code. So this is our Python shell. You can see here three sign here, okay? So now we are going to write our first program, simple hello world. Just trying to print here. So let's say if I'm using this print function here and inside this, I'm just going to write here one string that's called hello world. Okay, this word, o -O -R -L -D, word. Well, and enter, and you can see your hello world on the shell. Okay, hello world. You can write any kind of statement inside this print function, or you can say print method. So if I'm trying to write here, let's say print the knowledge doctor. So let's say knowledge doctor, and it will print this statement for me. You can see here knowledge doctor. So this is your first program. You can also use this Python shell to do calculations. So if I'm trying to use here 5 plus 4 or 5 plus 3, you can see here 5 plus 3 equal to 8. So you can also do the uh, uh, multiplication here. So let's say 4 uh, into 3, you can see here 12. You can also use here divide. Okay. So let's say 10 uh, divide 2. You can also use here the model operations. You can use that. So let's say 10 uh, modulo operation 3. Okay, and you can see here 1. You can also show many calculation here. Let's say use here 
this kind of calculation. So let's 9 uh, into 2. Okay, so there should be 9 into 2. And you can see the answer. So you can use this Python shell as your calculator. And also you, you can use the Python shell as a printer. You can see you can just print here something on the shell. So now we're going to see the same code inside our BS code. That's mean our Visual Studio code. How can you do that? So this is our BS code interface. And you can see one folder that's called Python Crash Course. So now inside this folder, we are going to create one Python file. Let's say fast.py. Okay. So our Python file is created. So now what I can do, we are going to actually write our fast program that we do earlier. So let's say print here the hello world. Okay. Hello world. Simple. And now if I am trying to save this code, you can also go to this file and you can also use here the auto save. And right now you can see auto save is right now on on my side. If I am not saving it, control S. So it will automatically save this file. Okay. So let's save this also control S. And if I click this button and you can see if I click here, you can see run code, run Python file and debug Python file. If I click this run code and it will actually show me the output in the terminal, you can see hello world. So if I'm trying to close it and also try to run Python code, it also run the Python code here, right? That's really awesome. You can also use the terminal here. You can just go on the terminal and new terminal and you can type here the Python your interpreter name and your file name. So our file name is nothing but fast.py. Well, and you can see your hello world. That's really awesome. So you can also do the calculation here and you can see here simple hello world here. We can also do here the calculation. Uh, let's say that we do earlier in the Python shell. So let's say five uh, uh, plus three. So if I run the code here and you can see the output at eight. And if I do the five minus three and you can see here two, okay. You can also use here the multiplication, okay, five cross three, and you can see here 50, same as the Python shell. But there's a problem, we can just write a statement inside our printed statement. We can use here variable to store those value. So next topic, we are trying to uh, discuss about this one. How can you use variables in Python? So our next topic is variable data type and data input. So now let's see what is variable. So variables are like in boxes and you can see here this one kind of boxes or you can say one container. Just a water can be stored in a box, object can be stored in variables. So variable can store many kind of things. It can store the values. So there is an equal sign between the variables and the value. So when you write the variables in Python, so there should be on equal side between the variables and the values. You can store the value inside your variable. So the left side of the symbol is called the variable and the right side is the value of the variable. So when we are trying to write the code in Python and you can see here one variable name and one equal sign and the value of the variable. So this is called the assignment. So in the last video, we see that how can you print some statement inside our print function. And also we do the multiplication, we just make some calculation inside that. So now we're gonna see that how can we use the variable inside our Python program. So for that, let's um, create another file. So this is the second part. So let's make it second.py. Okay. So now we are going to create one variables. So variables can be any name. So let's say x equal to 5. So x is the variable name and 5 is the value of that. So this is the sign equal sign. So now if I am trying to print it, let's say print the x. Okay. And if I am save it and click here to run the file and you can see here 5. Right? So 5 why? Because this is the store the value of x. Okay? x value equal to 5. So that's why it pin here 5. So if I change this, should be the 1, uh, 1, 5. And you can see here 1, 5. Right? So now let's clear it. Okay? Now if I change this value as 12 app, right now, if I click here to run this file, and you can see here value is right now 12 app. But what the problem? It's not printing the 15. It's printing here the 12. Why? Because Python use here the interpreter and it will actually execute the next line. In any kind of programming language, it actually printing the 12. So this is called the reassignment. What? Reassignment. Okay. So now we are going to store the value of that and we can do the calculation. So let's say uh, 3. So if I'm trying to add it, x plus y and run it and you can see here 18. Simple. You can also use here the minus sign. 
and you can use here the modulo sign you can do any kind of calculations okay so this is called the variables in python so there are some rules in python to declare one variable you can use here the capital uh, letter add to z and also use here the small letter add to z you can also use here the digit 0 to 9 you can use this or you can also use the underscore you can use this as a variable name okay but there are some restrictions you can't use them as a python variable so there are some reserve keyword in python you can't use this reserve keyword as a python variable so if i make it at let's say my name let's say chando so this should be one variable okay if i'm using here underscore so this should be one variable right and you can also use here digit so let's say digit here let's say one so this is not should be one variable why you can't use you can use the digit but you cannot use this digit at the first index right at the first you can use here inside your variable name like that but you cannot use this at the first one right so this is the uses that how can you declare one variable in python if i'm trying to actually print it let's say just make it chando and you can also comment this line so for that you can use here one shortcut key so control and the backslash and it will comment this line this interpreter is not actually execute this line right now so if i enter click here to run the shell and you can see here 50 so this is our variable it has stored the value you can also use here 0 to 9 you can also use here the underscore so let's use here underscore so if i'm trying to print it so let's see print it and you can click here and you can see 15 simple but you can't use here some result to your in python let's say true okay okay this should be the true so this is a reserve keyword in python you can't use this as a variable if i'm trying to use here let's say false so this is a reserve keyword let's say try okay this is a reserve keyword in python you can use this as a variable right so let's see some list of uh restriction that's mean the keyword you can't use this as a variable so this is the list of that you can't use this kind of keyword in python as a variable false none true and exe not as finally or assert like that all the value you can take one snapshot of that and you can memorize this also to just make it make it make sense that you can't use this keyword as a variable so now we are going to jump the next topic that's called data input how can you take the input from the users so now we are going to discuss about that how can we take the input from the user so let's say a equal to 5 see this a is a variable and 5 is a value but we give here 5 as a manually okay just type here as a manually now we are going to take the input from the user user just type here and it will take one input so for that what i can do here we can use here one method in python that's called input simple and this is a method so this sign this uh bracket you need to use here input so if i'm trying to print here the a okay and if i run the code here and it will take in the input if i give here let's say two and it print here two and you can see a two okay so if i run the code here again let's say python second dot py let's say six enter and you can see here six so this is the input function or you can see input matter to take the input from the users you can also give here one message here let's say enter a number cool and now if you run the code here and you can see enter a number so let's say five and you can see a five you can also do the calculation here so let's say b equal let's say uh, copy this so let's enter first number then enter the second number okay cool and now if i give here a plus b and now run the file here and you can see here enter the first number let's say two and the second number let's say five but it got here 25 why what's the problem here yes that's the problem because how in the python take the input from the users is that take the input as a string now the what is a string a string is a data type in python so there is some data type inside your python it's called integer then call float then call string then call boolean 
So that are the data type in Python. Okay, you just need to memorize them. Integer, float, string, and the boolean. So now the question is, how can we check that is our variable is right now as a taking the input as a string or taking the input as an integer or taking the input as a float. So for that, we can use here one method to check that. That's called type method. So let's say print, let's say type of a. So using this, we can actually check that the type of our variables. So let's comment out this line and click it to save it and run the code. Let's say path first path first number. So let's say two, let's say seven. And you can see a class is a string. Why class? Because Python is object oriented programming language. That's why it's class. Simple. A string. So it's take the input as a string. So that's why when we add them, we just give here two and five. We just add it to a string, not to integer. So for that, we can do the typecasting. Let's call that typecasting in Python. So for that, you can use this keyword to type casting the type. If I'm using this, let's say int and inside is integer, we just need to pass here. That's called type of int. Now again, so integer and this one. So now this string is converted into one integer. So now if I uncomment this line, and run the file here so let's give here to click here to run the file first number let's say five and let's second number let's call ten and you can see your class is right an integer and it also add the two number you can see a 15. cool so now if i'm trying to make it as a float okay and let's make it as a float and uh let's run this code and you can see here just give here 10 two value let's say 10 and 23 and you can see a 33.0. There's also one um, data type that's called double. Okay. Also uh, list, also dictionary, also tuple. So we are going to discuss this all the data type later on, right? So now you can make one simple calculator using that. That's really simple. Okay. So this our data input from the users. Okay. And also the data type. So how can you declare on data type and how can you take the input from the users? So now the question is, we taking the input in a single line, A equal to or B equal to. How can we taking the input from the user in a multiple line, in one single line, but multiple input? See, uh, if I run the code here again, see one thing, just we need to give here 23 and again enter the, enter the enter from the keyboard and let's say 56. So you get here the actually get here the output, but we need to type here two values one after another. So how can we type here in one single line? So for that we need to use here one method that's called split. We just need to split this uh, function or value using one space or using one comma. Okay. So now if I am assign here one variable that's called x comma y, that's mean inside this x and y we are trying to take in the input and also store it. So let's say enter two number. Okay, let's enter two numbers. Okay, so how can you do that? We actually using here one function that's called our method is called split. Okay, this one is split. So we are going to split that. Okay, and store inside the X and Y. So now if I'm trying to print this one a statement, Let's say print and let's say type of the x and also let's say x plus y. So this type should be the uh, string. So we are going to convert it into the integer. So that's how we are going to use the type casting. Uh, just this one. And now if I am uh, comment this line also, we don't need it right now. And let's run the code here. So enter two number. So let's say 12 and let's say 23. And you can see here invalid literally for integer is base 10, 12 up and 23. So we need to just uh, first make need to take the input from the users. So let's say 23 and let's say 34. And you can see a 2, 3, 3, 4. We're taking the input, but we can change in one single line. So for that, we need to use here x equal to int x and y equal to. We just need to do in it in a another operation 
x and y you can also use this let's run the code here let's say two number let's say five and the six we can take in the input in a single line okay you can say 11. if i'm trying to use here int inside this whole function okay and just comment out this line and just run the code here so let's see five and h and you can see the same error okay so you cannot use this as a uh, as a type casting for the two input so for that we need to just follow this line x equal to int x and y equal to int y cool so this is the part number two of variables data type and the data input so if you have any query just comment below so now let's move on the next topic that's called operator so now in this part we are going to discuss about the operators in python so in the first one in the operator that's called the arithmetic operator so this is so simple just basic operator here addition subtraction multiplication division modulo operation exponential and also the floor divisions so now we are going to use these operators in python so well so this is the part number two that we do earlier so now we are going to create another python file here that's called third.py so this is our third part so in this part we are going to discuss about the operators in python so first we are going to discuss about the arithmetic operator that you see earlier right so arithmetic operator there are some operator like plus then minus then multiplications then division then modulo operations and also the exponential sign so exponential sign is nothing but called just double sign and also the division and also the floor division okay so there's are the operator that's called the arithmetic operator so now we are going to assign here into one variable let's call a equal let's say 5 plus 2 if i'm trying to print it let's say print a and if i run the code here and you can see here 7 as the output right so it's just simple adding if i use here minus so there should be 3 and now i'm using here the into just multiplication 5 cross 2 equal to 10 so now if i'm using here the exponential 5 is to uh, is to 2 that's been exponential time okay so this is nothing but call the power of 5 so power of 5 is nothing but our 25 normal if i'm using here 3 okay you can see here we got an error so you cannot use here 3 okay you just use here 2 if you use here 3 right now so this is the power of 5 cross 5 cross 5 that's been 5 to the 3 to 125 normal okay so if i'm using here the division simple division and you can see here 1.66 something if i'm using the double that's mean this is give here the floor division so the answer should be one okay one right it will actually give you the floor divisions so if you divide by 10 uh 10 the floor division of three so it will give here answer as three okay integer one normal and also let's say modulo operation so 10 modulo 3 and it will give here the modulo operation value equal to 1 normal and simple so this is called the arithmetic operators so there's the comparison operator so you can see here equal not equal greater than less than greater than or equal to or less than or equal to so there's the comparison operator so let's move on the base code so now let's see the comparison operator so there are some operator available equal equal then not equal and also have the greater than then less than or greater than equal or less than equal so there's the comparison operator so now we are going to use this operator and do some uh, python programs so let's use the two equal to so let's try to print it out let's print if let's say two equal equal to right so this is obviously equal so it will give me the value as true also one okay i need to comment out this line also so two equal to two equal to true so obviously it's true it's also called the boolean operator it will give here a true and a false answer so if two not equal to two it's not true it obviously false so it give me the result as false so if i'm actually using here let's say five is greater than or equal to two so this is a true or false this is five is greater than or equal to two but you can see here the less than sign so it will actually give here answer as a false if i am using here the 5 is greater than 2 so it is obviously true so it will give me answer as a true normal if i'm using here 5 is greater than 2 so it is obviously true because this is always greater so if i'm actually using here the 5 so 5 is greater or equal 5 
just it will actually compare the two values between them so it will equal or the greater so greater is not but it equal so if you run the code you can see here true okay so again last equal so you can see here true right so this is the normal operator that's called the compare generator if you are trying to compare two values you can use this one so our next operator is nothing but called the assignment operator this is really simple if you are trying to assign some values inside your variable you can use this assignment operator so let's see the example okay so now you're going to see the assignment operator so let's say i am trying to give here one value let's say a equal to 5 normal or you can say a variable name let's say bar or let's say value or it is a keyword so let's say give here val okay so let's say val equal to 5 so i am trying to add here again 5 value with that let's mean 5 into 5 or 5 plus 5 let's say val equal to val plus 5 simple i'm just adding here 5 value with this value right so if i'm trying to print it let's say print the value so the value is obviously be 10 you can see here i just get here 10 but we can make it simple we can use here this kind of operator that's called the assignment operator just using this one val plus equal to 5 that's mean it's mean val equal to 12 plus 5 this line and this line are same right almost same so if you run the code here and you can see here same output as a 10 if you change it let's say 1 5 and the value should be 20 right if you use this minus it will actually uh, sub subtract the value from the 10 if you use here the into operator it will again the same to 15 cross 5 equal to 75 again divisions you can use here equal to 3 normal it's really normal okay so this is called the assignment operator you can use this shortcut okay so our next topic is logical operator it's really simple just and or or not let's go on the base code so let's comment out this line okay and also close it so now our topic is nothing but call the operator of logical just mean logical operator so and or or not that's are the three operators that is available inside your python okay so let's say and is actually checking the two values okay so let's say if two equal equal to two and also let's say three equal to equal to three okay so if i am trying to check this out let's try to print it out let's print inside this value if two equal equal two and also three equal equal three that's mean you need to satisfy the two values okay if i'm change it let's run the first code right now you can see a two if i'm change it if three equal to four it will obviously give me the value as a false why because this and is checking the both condition okay left side and also the right side conditions and after that if the two values equal then it will give here true answer otherwise it will give here false answer if i'm actually using here all it will just check at least one value at least one if you try to run the code you can see here a gap here value as a true why because two equal to two it's really true okay if i'm actually using here not right now but it will give me the error okay you cannot use this kind of uh, comparison operator like that in a logical operator between them okay you can use and and or so how can you actually use here not you can just use here not in single conditions only on single condition so let's say not okay so not 2 equal to 2 so this is really should be false because 2 equal to is really true but how can you make it not so true is obviously make is as false so if let's say 2 is not equal to 2 it is not real so i give here i actually got here value as the true because 2 is not equal to 2 is really false so if i am trying to make it convert as a not so it should be true right so this is nothing but call the logical operator and or and not so and will check the both two conditions left side and also the right side and or just check the one condition and not check that or you can say not are actually making the true should be false and false should be true simple really very simple so now we're going to see the membership operator in python i think so many operator here 
So next operator is called the membership operator in and not in. So in is actually return the true if the sequence is specified with x in y. If the value of y is present inside the x, so it will actually give you the true answer. Otherwise, it will show the false answer. So not in, that's mean this is the opposite of in. Simple, if the true, it make it false. If the false, and it will make it true. Normal. So let's see the base code. Mm. Let's take a two variable. Let's say let's say one variable called country. Uh, let's say my country name. I'm from Bangladesh. So let's say Bangladesh. Okay. And let's say uh, country. Let's say one equal to let's say normal dash. So if I'm checking that if the dash is available inside this country one. So how can you check that? So we are using here the membership operator simple in. If the country one in country, okay, normal. So if I'm trying to print it, let's say print it. So this is obviously true or false. It is obviously true because country one dash is present inside the country. Okay, run the code, you can see it true. But if I am trying to change this dashi, let's see, and you can see it false because dashi is not available inside of Bangladesh. Again, let's say if I am trying to make this country to country one, okay, and try to make it run it, you can see it false because this country total value is not available inside dash because this is normal dash and this is Bangladesh. So this is not available inside dash, right? So if I make it not, so it will give here false right now. You can see answer is right now false. So obviously I get here as a true. Why? Because this is the opposite of this not in okay if i'm give actually get here below as a true so it will give here below as a false if i'm get here below as a false i just get true right so this is the membership operator so now our next operator and the final operator is called the identity operator so this is so important so the operator is is and is not so is is mean if return actually true if the both variable are the same object that's mean if the both value are equal in the same object category it will actually return here as a true. Otherwise, it return here false. So is not is totally different, or you can see opposite of is. Let's check this out. So let's comment out this line. Let's say um, a equal to let's say India. Okay, and let's say b equal to twelve. Normal. So let's say a is b. Is it really true or not? So if I am trying to print it, a is b. And if I run the code here, you can see it false because a is nothing but one in string and b is nothing but one integer. So it's not. So let's say if I'm trying to make it as let's say 30 and try to run the code and you can see it again false because a and b value is not same. If I'm trying to make it 12f and you can see it true. So again, it is opposite. So if b is not, so again, it will give here as a result as a false opposite of the true normal, right? So this is nothing but called the identity operator in Python. So in the next part, we are going to discuss about the string manipulations. So this is so important part. And I just moved through, through this, this operator because this is real simple. So let's move on the next part called string manipulation. So our next topic is nothing but called a string manipulation. So what is a string actually? A string is nothing but joining of some character. But in Python, if the value is surrounding beating one single quotation or the double quotation that's called string so now let's go on the vs code and try this out so this is our fourth topic uh, called string manipulation so let's create here another python file here so let's say fourth dot py so we already told about that in python we can actually use here uh, two quotation one single quotation and also the double quotation and inside that that's called string so let's assign here one variable that's called a Let's say India and another variable, let's say call B. Let's say inside the single quotation, let's say Bangladesh. Okay. So you can see here, we can actually initialize as a string in a single quotation and also the double quotation. If I am trying to print it type, so let's say print type of A and also the type of B. So let's copy this out and paste it, uh, type of A and type of B, and just run the code. 
Okay, you can see here this is nothing but called a string. Okay, both are a string. So now if I am trying to uh, use here one a single quotation inside this value, let's say Bangladesh is my mother land. Okay, so if I am trying to use one single quotation inside this line, can I? So let's say my you can see here i got one error i cannot use here one single quotation inside one single quotation why because this is the first single quotation and our python interpreter is actually waiting for the next quotation and you can see here this is the first quotation and this is the second quotation but the problem is both are rest of the two are not at the same okay so that's why our string is completed in this side and this error is come the right side this means rest of them so that's why you can't use the single quotation inside a single quotation so how can you remove this problem we can actually use here double quotation okay my so if i'm trying to print it you can see here okay it not should be the type so let's say print the b normal b and just remove this line here you can see here python is my motherland and also you can see here double quotation you can see it's also printed so it's also same as here let's say india is my motherland okay so if i'm trying to print it let's say inside that i can't use here the double quotation i need to use here one single quotation okay that's mean in the double quotation side you need to use here single quotation and in the single quotation side you need to use here the double quotation if i'm trying to run the code here let's say print also the a okay so let's make it a and on the code you can see here Bangladesh is my motherland and also the India is my motherland right so both are printing well but the problem is you can see here uh, the quotation and this also the quotation okay also you can use here single quotation inside your single quotation string so now the question is how can you print this my inside one single quotation using one single quotation just using this kind of single quotation how can you do that so you can use here one forward slash okay not backward so let's say forward slash this one and this one okay and you can see here our error is gone so if i'm trying to print it out and you can see bangladesh is my motherland we can print it inside one single quotation we can actually print one single quotation so for that this is also same so let's say my we can use here forward not backward slash okay like that so you can see your error is gone so you can try to print here the a okay sorry for that just make it a and run the code and you can see india is my motherland well so now we can also mm, print here the backslash so if i'm trying to print here this slash backslash and if i'm trying to run the code and you can see your backslash if I actually use here again two and you can see here i can print here the two slash but if i'm trying to print here one forward slash okay so i we can see here i got an error but if i'm using here two so i can actually print here one well so this is a technique you can also use here the tab that's been backslash n you can see a space you can also use your backslash 10 so this is n is nothing but the next uh next space okay and this is the next tab so you can see we get here one tab well so you can print it okay and means next line and t mean tab okay so now the question is how can we access the value of that of this string so let's comment out those lines right now so let's say country equal to let's say brazil because this is right now the walk of season so let's use my favorite tree name brazil so let's say i am trying to access the value of b r a g i l so the string is nothing but contained inside the python script like one kind of indexes so you can actually access the each value from that so for that you need to use here the index value so if i'm actually using here country this bracket zero so it will actually initialize this index number zero that's in b if i'm trying to print it out you can see here okay we don't print it here so you need to also print it out so let's say print the country zero 
So I can get here value as a B, you can say B. If I actually using here one, so I can get here below as a R. Again, two, I get here below is A. So you can see here R, okay, this one. If I'm trying to use here the five, so you can see I get here below as L. And if I'm actually using here the six, I got an error because this is the out of index. That's when our string length is nothing but five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. That means zero to five, that means six. But the index is out of the string because it is six. So index is start from zero. So that's why zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So now the question is, you can see here is string out of range. So that's mean when the string is out of range, you can print the index, okay? So now the question is, how can you print them from the one uh, value to another value? Let's say I'm trying to print here bra jill or let's say brach. So how can I print them? So for that, I need to start from zero to index, zero to index, and I need to go on the index number zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. So if I'm actually using here three, and you can see I got here B R A, but I actually miss here B R A, I miss here the jet. Why? Because how I actually go to the zero to three, I just access here zero, one, two, and three. Not three here, just two. So if I actually use here four, okay, so I can access here zero to three. That's in four value. So if I run the code here, and you can see bra. Let's say make it Argentina. And you can see here, if I'm trying to access it, and you can see A R G E. Access the below from zero, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. So if I'm trying to actually print it from one to four, so that should be one, two, and three. So G R G E. Okay. And you can see here R G E. Okay. So this is the access point. How can you actually access them? Right. So if I actually using here, let's say two, just this colon. So it will actually print from two to rest of them. So you can see here, Gentina, Gentina. Okay. Just mean two to rest of them. Okay. Zero, one, and two, and rest of them. It will print them. So you actually use here three. You can see here. After that, it will print here. So if I am actually using here the minus one, so it will print the last index. A. If I'm trying to use here two, so it will print the last two index, NA. That's N. If I actually use here dot, this operator, and you can see here NA. That's been minus two and this sign on. It's just going to print it out. Okay. So this is nothing but called the value access of the string. Okay. And we can also uh, use here the let's say minus string. Just use it. And you can see here I N A. So how can you actually access the bill from the string? So this is really boring, I know, but this is quite informative. So now you're going to see that how can you format the string? Just how can you actually format one string here? Let's say Argentina, okay. Let's say Neymar, or let's say Pele. Okay, Pele is, let's say go AIT. Okay, it's not a goat. Okay, this is Z O A T get it of at the all time okay so let's say Pele is greatest of all the time is brazilian footballer so let's say i am trying to uh make it format okay so let's say Pele is goat and he is a brazilian so i'm just trying to print it out so let's say if i'm trying to print it let's say print the okay let's make it player if i'm trying to print it out let's say print the player name so you can see here Pele is good. Okay. So I just wanted to make it Pele is good and he is a Brazilian footballer. Okay. So let's say I am trying to make it, let's say pass, or I can use here comma. And let's say he is an uh, he is a Brazilian. Footballer. Right, so I'm trying to print it out, and you can see Pele is a good and and he is a Brazilian footballer. Okay, well, and you can see here it's called the string formatting. 
so let's say use here another one so let's say Messi is a so I'm trying to make it let's say Messi is a goat player okay so let's say is a uh, goat footballer okay so you can see here Messi is a goat footballer you can see here also the spaces you can also use this player uh, outside them so let's say uh, I know okay I know Messi is a goat footballer right so let's say I can use here the comma and the player okay so let's say I know Messi is a good player, footballer, right? So now if I am trying to use here the format the string or format sign a specifier that you are actually using the C programming language, you can also use that. So let's say this is string, so you can use here the modular sign S, and you need to also use here the modular sign here. So if I am trying to actually use here and just trying to print it out, you don't need to use here comma here. So if I'm trying to print it, you can see I know Messi is a good footballer. You can also use this one, right? Format a specifier. So if you're trying to print here the string, you can use here ampersand this modulo sign s. If you're trying to use here integer, you can use here modulo version d. And if you're trying to use here for the float, you can actually use here percentage f. Right? So now we are going to see that how can we actually using this format a specifier here. So let's say uh, take on number. Uh, just one simple number let's say number equal to let's say four three seven point six five six something else okay so i am trying to print it right now so let's say print the number if i am trying to print it out and you can see here the number let's say i am trying to print the last two number of the digit after the point so how can you actually uh do that so for that we can use here this specifier so let's say percentage point to f okay and just i am going to actually use here the rest of the two number so if i'm trying to use here you can see here to f okay we got one error here so we need to also use here this ampersand sign here and also remove this let's run the code right now you can see here four six seven point five seven we just got here the two uh after the two values okay if i'm actually using here three so I can got the value as the uh, 467.567 like that or 588 because this 7 is nothing but less than 8. So that's why to make it 8. If I make it 4 and you can see here we got the value as the fourth value, last fourth value, we actually got it, right? So now um, how can you take the input from the users? We already know that. How can you take that? Then using this, we can also our... Uh, manipulate our string also so let's say taking one input from the users so let's say user uh, equal to taking the input so let's input so i am trying to actually let's say enter your name okay or uh, let's enter your first name right enter your first name and also let's say enter your second name okay Let's make it user one and now i am trying to add to them let's say user plus user one okay so let's run the code here enter your first name so let's say Misho. enter your first name or oh, there should be second name here so let's say her and you can see here Misho her right so now we can actually make it formatting so let's say we can actually use here let's say hello okay comma and we can use here this plus sign okay so hello and let's say user number this one and let's say user okay so if i'm trying to print it so let's uh, you enter your first name let's say me show and enter your second name that's the third so hello mishu mishu okay okay this should be user one so you can also give here one space so for that you can actually use this space and if i'm trying to run this out 
let's say Chandu Dar. And you can say hello Chandu Dar. So you can take the input from the user and also you make it format. Okay. So there is another way to format that. So let's see this out also. So let's say print. Let's say hello. You can use this sign. Okay. And use here one function that's called format. And inside this, you can actually pass here your this value user. And you can also give here user one also. For that, you need to use here the two bracket. So let's say uh, hello Mishudhar. So I just use here this plus sign and also this one. Okay. If I'm trying to actually run this code here right now, enter your first name. So let's say Mishu and let's say Dhar. And you can see here hello Mishu plus plus Dhar. Okay. It is actually printing this one and in this format is actually uh, taking the space as one. You don't need to actually put here. So if I'm trying to run this code again, so let's say Chando. Let's say Dhar. And you can see here hello Chandu Dhar. So you can also use this one. You can also use this one. It's up to you. I think it's quite better. You can actually use this format function or you can say format method. So well, so our next topic is Python list. So what is the Python list actually? So Python list is a smart data type in Python. So this, this one is called the smart because it has many practical applications. You can use here mixed type of data type uh, in other program language or C or C++ or Java. May I notice there is a thing called array. But in Python, there is no array. And also in array, you just store one kind of data type. But in Python list, you can store mixed type of data type. It can be integer, it can be float, or it can be double, or it can be string. So that's why Python list is more smarter than other programming language. Although we call it list is a data type, but list actually belongs to the Python building data structure. So now you're going to see that how can you use the list in Python programming language. So now let's discuss about the list in Python. So now we are going to do the coding here. So let's see how can you implement the list in Python. So for that, let's create here one Python file. Let's say list class.ui. So when you're trying to initialize one list in Python, you need to use here the third bucket, this third bucket. And inside this bucket, you can actually give it some values. So let's say initialize into inside one variable that's called a equal to one empty list. So if I'm trying to print it type, to check this out, what is it? So just type inside this type method, just pass here a. So if I run the code here, and you can see a type is nothing but one list. Okay, so this is one empty list. Okay, so now inside this list, I can actually give here some values. So let's say give here value as let's say Chandu. Okay, so if I am trying to uh, print it, let's say a and run, you can see a Chandu. And let's give here another name, let's say give here Chaiti. Okay, and let's give here another name. Let's say Mesho. Okay, so if I run the code here, you can see here all the name is appeared on here. So now if I'm trying to give here some integer or double or float value, so let's say 0, 1.2, something else. If I run the code here, you can see here it can. But in other programming languages like C or C++ or Java, you cannot put here the mixed type of data. Right? So this is the basic advantage of using list in Python and Python doesn't use any array. So it use that list. So now the question is how can you access the value from here? So in order to access the value, we can use here the index number. So let's say a one. Okay. So we can uh, click here and you can see here JT is the number one index. If I actually give here value as zero, so just run the code here and you can see here Chandu, right? So I got here the value of index number zero. Okay, so let's give here another name also. So let's give here um, some name. So let's give here Shanto. Uh, let's give here another name. Let's say Ontu. Okay, and let's give here, try to run this out. And you can see here some syntax error. Okay, I need to just pass here comma here. So just run the code here. And you can see here Chando. Okay. So if I am trying to access the element from one to five, so let's say one to five, so I can just use this one, okay? And you can see here Chaiti, Mishu, Shanto, and Antu. Those are actually printed here, okay? From one to five. So one to five mean one, two, three, and four. Just four index, not five, right? So if I start from zero, so it will start from zero, one, two, three, four, okay? So start from zero, 
So you can see around the code, you can see Chando, JT, Mishu, Chanto, and Antu, right? So now the question is, how can you print from the last element? So just we can use here minus one. Okay, so if I use here, you can see minus 1.2, sorry, 1.2. So it is the last index. If I actually give here two, and you can see here, I can print here the second index. So if I use here the colon, you can see here, it will actually print the rest of them. It just mean 0 to 1.2, simple. You can also check this type also. Type also be uh, type of different data type. That's mean if you are trying to check this out, the what will be the first index value and what is the type of that. So you can actually also check this out. So let's say first index is nothing but one is three. So if I'm trying to ch uh, check this out, let's say type <coughs> of this first index. So if I run the code here, and you can see here this is one is string. So if I'm checking the last one, so how can you check that? So sort of simple minus one. Okay. Run the code here. You can see here class is nothing but float. Simple. You can also check the data from here. Okay. So now we can check that how can you update the value at the least. <coughs> so let's say. I am trying to um, change the name uh, of that value. So let's say if I am trying to change the value of zeroth position value equal to, let's say I am trying to change the zeroth position value, that's been trying to replace this value with another name. Okay. So let's actually give here another name, let's call Mona. Okay. So if I'm trying to run the code here, and you can see here our class is right now printed as zero as a Mona. And if I'm trying to print it, and you can see here Mona, Chaiti, Mishu, Shanto, Antu. Right. It's really awesome. Okay. So you can see here, this is really cool. This is really awesome. Okay. So you can also change it. Uh, let's say I'm going to change this Chaiti to a Jammy. So let's say one. So let's say Jammy. Okay. Just on the code here. And you can see here it changed the name. Well, so this is called the updated list. How can you actually update the list in Python? Okay, so now we are going to check this out that how can you actually assign here some values. So let's say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's say I am trying to assign here another value. So let's say inside the sixth position, let's say I am trying to give here on value, let's call three zone. Okay, just run the code here. And you can see here value is updated. But if I'm trying to actually give it here 7 as a three zone, you can see here list assignment index out of range because the length of the string or length of list is nothing but six. So I cannot actually access the seventh element. So how can I actually add them in the last of that? So you can actually use here one function or you can say method that's called append method. So for that, I need to use here a dot append and inside this, I am just going to pass here season. Well, so if I run the code here and you can see the season is add at the last. So now the question is, I'm trying to add the name uh, between after the jammy 0 1 and 2 so how can I do that I can actually use here another method or function you can call method or functions that's called the insert so let's say insert so this insert take uh, the position see if I'm trying to run the code first let's say just trying to run the code and you can see I got an error because insert accepted two argument at the positions you first you need to give here the positions and your value so I'm trying to give here the position as two after the two, I'm just going to pass it here. So let's say Mona Jamie and Season. You can see here, right? So because this list is actually updated, so if I comment out this line and just run the code here, and you can see here Chando Chaiti, Season, Mishu, Chando, Ontu, and the rest of that. Okay. So it actually inserted the value at the middle of the list. Right? <clears throat> so let's say I'm just actually put here one values. So if I am trying to actually give here multiple type of values, let's say multiple values, how can I do that? So you can actually use here extend. So let's say a dot extend. Just I am going to actually extend here some value. So let's say I am trying to extend here two values or three values. So for that I need to actually use here the third bracket. And if it is third bracket, I need to pass here the value. Let's say Sadia. Or uh, let's say mm -hmm, Jarin. Or uh, let's say Mema. Okay. Okay, so just I'm trying to run the code here right now. And you can see here all the values added at the last of the name. So they are Jordan and the Nimer. Well, so all the value is actually added here as extend. So using the append method, you can actually add the value as the last of the list. Using the insert, you can actually uh, actually add here the value at a specific positions. 
and using the extend you can also add the value of the rest of them but it's not single one you can add here multiple types of value right but there is another way to actually add that so let's comment out this line so you can actually use here the plus sign or plus operation so i just actually copy this out just copy this out Control c and i'm going to paste it here this is another way so you can see here same result we actually got here okay we got the one error so it actually changes so a equal to sadia is not actually added here so for that you need to also assign this inside the a value because we are just changing adding that but not changing in our initial value so that's why it's not changes right now you can see her changes sadia jordan and neymar right well so now the question is how can you delete the value from here so this is our list that we actually uh, changes something here okay so now i'm trying to delete one value from here so let's say delete one value let's say shanto i'm just going to uh, delete the shanto from this list so how can you do that we can use here dal a and we need to pass here the position of the value so zero one two three simple i just pass here three okay so now if i'm trying to print it here and you can see here shanto is gone well and again let's say four so let's say four and trying to run the code here and you can see here four is gone okay four is gone zero one two three and four is gone actually because four is right now zero so that's why fourth position is gone and now third position is actually replaced to the four so that's why uh mishu on is okay but zero is gone because this is the fourth index because shantu is gone zero one two three and four that's why zero is gone well so you can also use here one another method that's called the remove you can also remove their specific value so let's say a dot remove I'm just going to remove here the shanto you just need to pass here the value so i'm going to remove this name you can see here shanto is removed from the list okay you can also use here another method that's called pop so this pop is actually using one data structure like struct so it will actually pop the value from the last of the list so you can see here just it should pop the last value from the list well so we can also check the length of the list so for that what i can do we can actually use here the method that's called the length so how can you do that so let's say length of at uh, the list of a so how many value is actually here so i'm just going to comment out this line and you can see here seven there's a seven value here one two three four five six and seven well so you can also count it <laughs> normal so let's say a dot count okay so inside this count you are going to count the number of, of a specific value so let's say i'm just going to count my name chandu and also just comment out this line and this is our list right so you can see here one because chandu is actually present in here one time so if i make it again okay just comment out uh, also just copy this one okay just copy this one and paste it here let's i am also copy this name chaiti and just paste it here okay so now if i'm trying to run the code you can see here right now four because chandu is actually present here the fourth time okay chaiti is gone so let's say chaiti and also try to copy this out so now chaiti is two time and also chandu is two time okay so you can see here let's create code you can also check this out the two values are equal or not so how can you do that it's really simple so let's say the count of value equal equal to the count of value of jt so let's say like that so it's equal or not so it actually assign here one it actually return here one value as a true or false if the length of this two item count is equal so you can see here it's true right it's really cool right now you can also check this out so now the last element it's called the reverse you can also reverse them so if i'm trying to reverse this list let's say uh, i'm trying to reverse this list here so how can i do that okay using here one method that's called reverse normal reverse so reverse this one and run the code here and it will reverse the whole list okay uh none why okay well uh it is not working because first we need to reverse this and after that we can actually print it first you need to reverse that and after that we can print that it did not print inside the method and you can see i already printed out yet so you can see it reverse the input you can also short it 
based on the item. So it actually short it, okay, short not support between the internet string. Okay, the short method is actually not supported um, because list actually supported a list the mixed type of data, data, data type. So that's why it's not supported here. So you just need to put here one single item of value. So let's assign here another value. So let's say number equal to let's say one comma two comma three. Let's say uh, two again and nine or four or six or twenty or sixty seven like that six. Let's try to make this different so that we can actually short it out. Let's run the code here. Okay, that should be numbers. Okay, just going to print it out the numbers. So how can I short them? You don't need to actually use here the code to short this algorithm. Okay, you can see here our list is right now shorted. So you can also use here this method to short your list. And we also discuss about the reverse one. So basically how you actually reverse the code or reverse the list, we can actually use here the for loops. We actually use a two parameter approach to short them or not to reverse them. But in short, we can actually use a bubble short or quick short or mar short like that. But in this case, you don't need to actually do the whole code. You just use here one method that's called short. Okay. So this is the all about the list. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this one. So our next topic is nothing but tuple. So tuple is more similar than list. It's also awesome. So let's jump on that. So now we are going to discuss about the Python tuples. A tuples is also a type of list. So the question may arise that Python have already list. So why should you use here the tuples? I know this question is very intelligent and also logical. However, tuple is not changeable. Whereas list is changeable. That's mean you can change the list in runtime, but you cannot change the tuple. So that's the basic difference between list and tuple. Also, list use the third packet and tuple use the first packet. So now let's see the implementation of tuple in VS Code. So now you're going to see that how can you implement on tuple in Python. So for that, let's create here one Python file. Let's say tuple class.py. So how can you actually initialize here on list? We simply use here the third packet. Now you're going to use here the first packet. So let's say this first packet, simple tuple. And inside this tuple, we can actually give here some values. So let's assign into one variable that's called a equal to one empty tuple. And if I'm trying to uh, see the type of that, and also, you know, tuple is one data type, or you can say data structure in Python, right? So run the code, you can see your class is nothing but tuple. Okay, cool. So now let's try to add here some values. So let's, I'm going to add here some value. Let's say Chando, let's say again, same name, let's say Chaiti. And let's say another name, let's call Mishu. And let's say Ganesha. Okay. And let's add here another name, let's call Shiva. So if I am trying to um, print it, let's try to print it out. And so on the code, you can see here Chando, Choiti, Mishu, Ganesha, and the Shiva is printed. So if I am trying to add here 0 or 1, and also try to print it, you can see here it also printed. That's mean, again, the at least is also the mixed type of data structure. And also tuple is a mixed type of data structure. You can actually give here a string float or double or in any kind of data structure, data type in one single tuple, right? So now the problem is list is changeable, but tuple is not changeable. We can also access the value here. So let's try to do that. Let's say one. So the one is nothing but shaiti, okay? You can also check this type of that. So let's say type that we do in the list class. Okay. So just try to print it out. You can see here class is nothing but only string. So you can actually change it, right? So if I am trying to uh, initialize this one, let me replace this value with another name. So let's say new, normal, just new. If I'm trying to print it out, that's when you are trying to change the value of the tuple of the no, position number one. So if I run the code here, and you can see a tuple of that does not support item assignment. That's mean it not supported, you cannot change the value in the runtime. So now the question is, how can I actually replace them? How can I actually replace them? So we can actually add the value of the last of them. Okay, we can actually add it. So how can I actually add it? So we can simply add it just using the plus operator and we can actually give here the value. So let's say give your value as new. So if I run the code here and you can see here, okay, can only concatenate tuple, not a string to the tuple. Okay, 
so we can actually concatenate with one simple value with tuple so for that i need to actually make it inside on the a and now if we run the code okay we got the same error okay if i'm trying to change it to the let's say new okay we got this error because we actually miss here one comma here we need to also give here one comma so that it actually added so if you run the code here right now you can see how it actually added this new uh the last of the index so that's one uh, problem in tuple you can also count them uh you can count that how many index actually value is actually present here so for that we can actually use here just add or count so you can actually count the value from here let's say chando and just going to run the code here and you can see here right now value is one so if i'm trying to actually make it uh, also let's try to paste it out here and if i run the code here you can see here two that's mean this is the basic tuple class okay because this is really simple uh, ra rather than list because in the list you can actually give here so many kind of values so higher as you cannot use them in the in the tuple okay so if i'm trying to use here the reverse let's say you can see a reverse is not actually present here and again if i'm trying to use here the short okay you cannot use here in tuple and also if i'm trying to check the length of the a i can check this out okay so you can see your check of the length is nothing but right nine one two three four five six seven eight and also new is added that's why nine so that's been in tuple you cannot uh, do the same thing as a list so how are you trying to you're going to you do not to actually change anything here you just make your code remain constant or your value remain constant you can actually use the tuple so but how are you trying to change some code or trying to change the values of that you can actually use your list so now our next topic is set so well so our next topic is python sets so what is sets a sets is a data type in python much like as a list or also the tuple but the basic difference between set and the list is list can contain the same item in the multiple times so higher as set can contain a member of item just only once that's mean in the list you can actually add here the duplicate values but in set you can't so now let's see how can you implement it in python and do some operations on that so now let's see how can we implement the set in python so for that i am going to create here one python file here so let's say set class.py well so we actually initialize the list as a third bucket and tuple as a first bucket and now for the set we actually use the curly brackets that is the second bracket so for that what i can do we can use the second bracket or you can say curly brackets and let's give here one variable name a equal to this curly brackets and if i am trying to print the type let's see one interesting thing type of a and if i am trying to print it you can see here type is right now dict that's been dictionary why we actually we know that we can actually declare one set using this second bracket but we actually get here class as dictionary why so let's actually put here one value let's say my name so now one more interesting just notice it if you run the code here you can see a class is right now set but why i am i am printing it the first time as a null one why it should print as a dictionary because you cannot print the null set in the set class of that is set data type in python you just need to put here one value then it would actually initialize at one set otherwise it would actually initialize it as a dictionary so later on in the next topic we actually discuss about the dictionary one then you can actually understand the thing very well so one more important thing is set cannot be null in python class that means this python class set class okay so you can also initialize it using this set method okay so if i am trying to well, initialize into another variable let's call type of b and you can see here it's also class of set right so now uh, we can actually add here more value so let's add here more value so let's say mishu let's say again chaiti let's add here shanto let's add here Jamie. well so we can now if i am trying to print it just a and you can see here we can actually print it correctly shanto jemmy mishu chandu and chaiti but you can see we first index is nothing but chaiti chandu 
and Misho and JT and Shanto and Jimmy. But you can see here, it is nothing but actually change it straight. I can change the index of that. So if I am trying to actually copy this Chando from here and going to paste it here. And if I run the code here, and you can see here Chando is one time, but in our set, it have Chando as two time. That's mean set is taking just one single element, one at a time. But in list, you can actually store the multiple element, that's been duplicate element in the same time. So that's our basic difference between list and set, okay? So let's assign here some values. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I am trying to print it, let's say B, and try to print it, you can see here set accepted one argument got H. Okay, so we need to actually initialize it inside one bracket. Okay. Okay, so this is the second bracket, right? Call it brackets. So let's give here this one. And if I am trying to run the code, and you can see how it also uh, printed. Now, let's say I am going to actually give here one value, let's say one comma three like that so if i try to run the code here you can see here one to eight that's when one is two time but it not printed yet right well so now the question is how can you actually access the element of set so if i am trying to access the element of a1 okay and you can see here you got an error set object is not subscriptable that's when you cannot actually access the value from here right that's one uh, disadvantage of using the set okay now, if I'm trying to add here one value, rest of them, so how can I actually add them? So let's comment out this line. Let's say I'm going to add here another name here. So for that, you can use here this add method. So let's say I'm going to add here one name, another name. So let's say add here season. Well, so now if I'm trying to print it, so let's say try to print the A, okay? And try to run the code here. And you can see here Chando Mishu and Chaiti, Chandu, Jami, and the three zone is added, okay, at the last of the index. Based on this, because it actually uh, make it, what I call, in a increasing order, okay, it actually rearranges them. So if I'm trying to make it as eight, and also try to uh, see the B, and you can see eight is not present at the first, just it actually make it um, shorted, okay, in a shorted way. So that's also one important of using the set here. So we can, let's see another uh, method in set that's called the update. You can also update the value of the set. And one more interesting thing that I actually missed here, uh, that is let's actually, let's say a equal to, uh, let's say a simple name. Let's say um, Chandu. Okay, or let's say using here this set method, let's say set method. And let's say Chando like that. Okay, using the set method. So if I'm trying to print it, let's say a equal to Chando. If I'm trying to print it out, you can see here a d c h o n. It actually split the all the value from this string and it will make one set. Right? So how you actually give here any kind of value like that? It actually make it as a set. Right? You can see it actually make it as a set. Cool. So that's one advantage of using set here. Okay. So if you're trying to short it, let's say a dot short, you can see here short is not available here. So if you're trying to short this set, you need to actually make this set should be in a list. Okay. So let's say how can you actually make it? That's called type casting. If you're trying to change this uh, set in a list, you can also do that. So let's say set. Now if you can see here converting the set. So now you can short it. So let's say using the short method. And now if I'm trying to print it out, then you can see here our list is shorted. Okay. You can also check this out if there are any duplicate value or not. So using this set, you can also remove the duplicate element from your list. That's one important thing. How can you remove the duplicate element from the list? So first you need to convert this list into one set. And after making this set again, make it list, then you can short it. Simple. You can also remove the duplicate element from here. You can also reverse that. So let's say reverse it because list is actually supported the reverse one. You can see here our list is right now reverses. Well, that's really fine. So now uh, we are going to check the next method that's called the update method. 
So I'm going to just comment out this line. Okay, so let's say a dot update. So I'm going to just update the value of Chandu to Dharv like that. So let's say Chandu. I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to add here Chandu. Oh, okay, sorry, to Dharv. Okay, so let's comma and just paste it here. So now if I'm trying to update it, just update it. Okay, first let's cut this sound and I'm going to just make it here and just run the code here and you can see here the problem is happening here the chandu is actually breaking down c h a n d and o is breaking down but i'm trying to add it that's mean i'm going to update with chandu with dhar so how can i do that so for that we need to also use it one curly brackets then it will actually update it then it will actually update it if i run the code here shanto Srijan, Chando, Mishu, Chaiti, Jamie, and Dhar. That means you can actually add here the Dhar. Rest of them. Okay. So you can update the Belu using this formula. Okay. Just add dot update. Now if I'm trying to actually remove one Belu from here, let's say remove. So I can actually use this remove method. So let's say I'm re I am going to remove here the Dhar. Okay. Because this is added here. So you can see a Dhar is gone. Well, that's really fine. So there is another element or you can see another method that's called the discard. You can also use the discard method. So comment out this line also. I'm going to comment out this lines also and also comment out this line also. So let's say I'm going to remove this dhar. If I run the code here, you can see here no element called dhar because it is not present inside our list. Sorry, inside our set. So how can I do that? We're just going to make it chandu. And run the code, you can see here chandu is removed from the list. Sorry, why I am actually uh, actually pronounce it as a list? It's called set. So there is another method, uh, same as the list. That's called pop method. Okay, so it will actually pop the last element from the Palu. So Chaiti, Shanto, Jemi, and the Mishu, and Chandu is gone. Okay, because this is present at the last of the index. That's why it's pop it. Okay, so you can also make it clear. So if I am trying to make it clear, that's when you can clear this. Let's clear it now you can see an empty set so now the most important thing is uh, maybe in the class 7 or 8 or the 11th or 12th class you do the mathematics of set called some operation union intersection and the difference you can also do it using this set uh, data structure in python so how can you do that let's see so let's comment out these lines also so now i am going to take two set so let's say we have one set called a so we have value let's say one comma two comma three comma four five comma six so we have another set so let's say we have value as a three four seven and eight okay so now we are going to do the operation of union so let's say union operation of b okay and i'm going to try to print it out just going to print it out so let's say print print this one and i'm going to just run the code here and i can see here this is the union it should take all the values. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 are the answers. So if I'm actually making at intersections, so intersections, so what will be the output? It actually taking the common one. So common is nothing but 3 and 4. So let's say you are trying to change, check the difference between them. So what are the difference between them? So 3 and 4 is gone. So difference is 1, 2, and 5, 6. Simple. 1, 2, and 5, 6. So this is the basic mathematics. You can also do it using this a set data structure in python so next one we are going to discussing about the dictionary one so this is the last data structure in python so you already covered list you already covered tuple and right now is the set and last one is called dictionary well so now let's discuss about the python dictionary so what is the dictionary so dictionary in python is a collection of key values used to store value like a map that's mean in the dictionary it can hold the pair of values one having the keys and also the corresponding pair element called value. It's also called the key value pair. In other data structure like list, you can access the element based on the index. But in dictionary, you can access the element based on the key. That's mean you have one key and also the value. If you access the key, you can get the value. So now let's see how can you implement in, in Python. So okay, well, so now let's create here one empty Python file. So let's say dict 
uh, let's say class dot py. So now let's create one dictionary. So in the last class, we actually discussed about the set class, that means set data structure in Python. So in sets and dictionary, most are similar. Most are similar, but the set is not actually using any key or value pair. And it also stores the unique element. But the uh, difference between the uh, set and the class is it also uses the actually the curly brackets. But in the set, you don't need to put here the key and value, but in the dictionary, you need to put here the key and value pair. So now if I am trying to print it type, so it should be one dictionary. Okay. So it should be one dictionary. Let's run the code here. And you can see here dictionary. But how can I actually give here one single element? Let's say my name, single element. So it will actually one set. But how can I am actually give here one key and also the value? Let's say my key is right now name. And you, you need to use here one semicolon. So this is the right side, left side, and also the right side. You inside that you need to give here one colon. So this right now this is key and this is right now value. So how can I try, try to print it? Type you can see here right now it's dictionary, not a set. That means how are you actually using as a key and value pair? It's called dictionary, otherwise, it's called a set. Now you can see here the name is Chandu. Now let's add here another one. So let's say nickname. Okay. And this is the key and let's give here value. So let's say my name is nothing but, uh, okay. Let's say me Shudhar and nickname is Chandu. Well, and also let's add here mail, mail. And let's say, let's give you an example mail. I'll say, let's say Chandu at the rate of gmail.com. Well, so now if I'm trying to print it out, let's say a and another code. And you can see here one normal uh, dictionary is appeared on here. So you can also create a dictionary using the dict, this dict method. You can also create one dictionary. So let's say b equal to dict and let's say b. And now if you run the code here, you can see one empty dictionary is appear on here, right? So let's say I am trying to access the value of name. So how can I actually access them? So in the list, we can access the element based on the index. But here we can actually access the element based on our key. So this is our name. So now if I am trying to print this out, just cut this out and I'm going to paste it inside the print function, okay? And now if I click here, you can see here Mishudhar is the nothing but the value of the key. Okay. So if I'm trying to change this Mishudhar to the another name, so let's say, how can I do that? So this is called the updating. So I need to just give here my key. So let's say key that I am going to change this and I'm going to pass here one value. So let's say Jamie. Okay. Let's run the code here. And you can see right now the value is nothing but Jamie. That's when it replaces the bellow. So if I'm trying to remove this name right now and run the code here, and you can see your name is right now converted into Jamie. Well, that's really good. Now you can also add here uh, the value here. So let's say I'm trying to add here on my hometown. So let's say hometown. So let's say my hometown is nothing but Cox Bazaar. So Cox Bazaar, Bangladesh. Okay, Cox Bazaar. Let's run the code here. And you can see here my a hometown is added at the end of the dictionary. So this is how you can actually add the another key and value in your dictionary, right? So now let's say I am trying to add two more columns in one single line. That's been hometown and also my favorite programming language like Python. So how can I do that in a single line? So let's say I am trying to create one uh, new variable. Let's say b equal. So I'm going to first add my hometown here. So let's say hometown. Okay. Let's say my hometown and also my favorite programming language. So let's say my hometown is Cox Bazaar. Okay. And let's say add here uh, my favorite language. Let's say favorite programming language. Or oh, let's say favorite programming. So let's say it's obviously Python. Okay. So let's say Python. Okay. So now I am trying to add those two, okay, B. So how can I do that? If I'm using here A plus B, 
let's see a plus b and trying to print it out let's say just print it out and run the code here and you can see your answer put it apparent you cannot actually add the dot dictionary right so how can you do that so this is called the updation so in order to do the updation part you can actually do using one method that's called update so let's say update and inside this i'm going to pass here the b now if i'm trying to run this or just print the a then you can see here this hometown and also my favorite programming language is also added at here okay at the a so this is called the updation so now i am trying to delete here something from my uh, dictionary so let's say i am going to uh, delete my name here so let's say i'm just going to delete my name so i'm using here dal this dal one dal keyword and delete this now you can see here my name is actually gone on here okay so this is one just gone on from here and you can also uh, delete it in another way also or you can also clear it so let's try to delete it in another way so let's say name or let's say another function is available here remove okay you can see a remove is not available here or discard is not also available here just you can actually use this dal keyword and delete it okay so if you're trying to clear it let's say just clear it clear your whole dictionary you can use here a dot clear that's been this clear and it will clear all the item from your uh, dictionary right so now you can also uh, take one copy from your dictionary so let's say i'm going to touch going to take one copy just this dictionary i'm just going to take a copy and after that i am trying to clear it let's say i'm trying to clear it and now i am going to print it so same result you using this one you can actually get on copy of your dictionary so if i'm trying to copy this out just copy or cut it and trying to print it here you can see here we actually got the same uh, copy of the dictionary so this is one simple method of copy so let's say we can also use here another method without using any index you can also use here as a, a, a method that's called get you don't need to use here the index you just use this get method so let's say i'm just going to get this name from my dictionary you can see here mishudar okay you can use this and let's say i am trying to searching one keyword that is not available here so it's not available here let's say phone number okay so i'm trying to get the value from here so if i run the code here you can see here none okay you can see here none because this get value if you see here this get have two uh, parameters as argument okay past one is your number and by default is none if there is no value is available you you cannot get any keyword key it actually gives here the value as a none okay you can see your key a string and default value is nothing but none this none that's why it actually uh, give here as a none because phone number is not available here you can also change this default value to anything let's say not available okay not available if i run the code here and you can see here not available because phone number is right now not available inside our dictionary you can change you can just give here one default message here okay so now let's check this out um I am trying to searching one keyword that is available inside the A. How can I actually get it? We can get it using this get method and also there is another way to get it. So let's say uh, phone, okay, phone this means this keyword in A, okay, in A. So is it really true or not? It's really false. That's when it actually give here answer as a false. So let's say print phone in A. So inside a phone is available, not available. So you give me a false. So let's say name is available and you can see true. So let's say use this chandu. It's available in a. See one thing, one important thing. You can see a false. Why? Because chandu is value. It can actually checking the key one, not the value one, right? It's just checking this. So it have another method that's called the item. So you can also use these methods, item. So it will actually print all item based on the dictionary. You can see it's this item and name, Mishudor and nickname, Chando. It will actually make it one in a formative way. So there is another uh, method that's called the keys. That's been how many keys you can also check this out. 
so for that you can use a dot keys you can keys, see here the keys that is available inside your dictionary name nickname and mail and also you can check the values okay values on the code you can see here the values so we can also print it out so just make it a dot keys and you can see here item is printed and the keys and the values cool so this is all about the dictionary python dictionary data structure so the four data structure is actually completed yet list tuple set and the dictionary and the next one we are going to discussing about the conditional statement like if and else so now we're going to discuss about the python conditional logic so conditional logic means if else so in python so there are three forms of if and else statement so first statement is called if second statement you can use if and also the else and third one is called if elif elif mean in other programming language it's called the else if and final one that's called the else statement and also python support the usual logical condition from the mathematics like equals not equals less than less than or equal to greater than or greater than or equal to you can actually use this inside your if and else conditions so in python you have three conditional statement you already see it so each has a different meaning and function so let's take a look if you use here if if it is true then do it if that's mean else if if the condition of is is not true then do it if always comes from after if so when your if condition is actually false then the else if condition is actually executed so when all the condition is going to be filled then the else condition is to be executed so this is the basic syntax of if if and the else statement you can see here after if you need to give here an expressions or your mathematical logic functions then one semicolon then in the statement again the elif again the elif and the else so now we're going to see that how can we implement it in our PS code so you can already see here i create one file here conditional class and also you can see here one questions right so let's think about a problem we assign five to the a variable okay let's assign it let's say a equal to 5 now if the value of the variable is less than 10 then print is less than 10 on the screen on the output screen so how do you do the job yes we can use here conditional logic so we have the question that we need to assign here a value inside one variable a equal to 5 so if the value is greater than or less than if the value of variable is less than less than 10 so we need to print here which one we need to print is less than 10 okay print print a is less than 10 okay less than 10 but we see uh, there's some error is coming up so let's run the code here and you can see here unexpected and intent block so why actually happening here you can see here uh, how you actually use here on semicolon we need to also give here some space that's called the indentation error okay so in python so how you actually use here one statement so make sure that you need to use here one tab normal tab or you can use here the four you can see here you can use here four space one two three four okay four space you can use that or you can use here one simple tab okay so then your uh, statement will be executed here so if i now around the code here and you can see a is less than 10 so now if i'm trying to make it let's say 15 and try to run the code here and you can see here nothing is printed why because 15 is not less than 10 it's greater than 10 so that's why it's not printing anything right so if you're trying to print anything let's say a is greater than 10 you can you wanted to print that so what should we need to use here you need to use here else block so if it is true then do it if it is false then do it so print you going to print it which one a is greater than 10 so let's copy this out and now i'm going to paste it here and also let's make it greater than okay if i'm now run the code here you can see here a is greater than 10 well so if you're trying to add here more conditions another condition here let's say I not also check that if a is equal to equal to 10 so how can I actually do that so else if but else if is not supported here we need to use here 11 
e leaf a equal to equal to 10 okay then i am going to print it here i am going to print here which one uh, a is equal to 10 well so now if i run the code here and you can see a is greater than 10 so if i am trying to make it 10 and on the code here you can see here a is equal to 10 well fine so we can also take the input from the users right so for that what you need to do we need to first taking the input functions and we need to also make it typecasting we already uh, yeah we already actually read it before in our previous classes so let's uh, give here one message so let's say enter a number and let's run the code center so number so let's say 12 so a is greater than 10 it's always greater than 10 so let's run the code here again so let's give here 9 a is less than 10 so let's give here 10 so a is equal to 10 well fine so there is another thing also uh, you can also do that so in python if the answer is not null it's actually written here through hello if the answer is null it actually return here the false so let's check this out it's also so what, so what i'm actually talking about so let's say a equal to 5 okay so if a just print here true okay it's not null print true or you can also make it like that true okay so else block see one important thing just watch i'm just going to print it here false so if i'm running the code here you can see output is true because a is not null so if i make it zero let's see you can see here false that's been a equal to zero that's mean if the value is zero the condition is executed as here it's false that's in not null so if the value is not null then it will return here as a true not null so it will return here as a value as a true in python else it will actually return you as a false because right now you can see a value is zero so when you have any program to solve some problems if the value is not null you, if you, you are trying to check this out you can actually using this formula right so if a then print true otherwise print false well that's really fine now also comment out these lines also so now we are going to discuss about the next state if else okay so let's give here one questions uh that you are going to following that so the user will input a value of a okay we are going to take one input from the user so let's say input so let's say enter a value okay so next state mean we need to check the two condition is one single state bed so let's say enter a number and let's actually make it as an integer okay so what we need to do here second line if the value is less than 10 okay if the value is if the value mean a if the value of a is less than 10 okay we check to see if the value is divisible by 2 that's when when it is satisfied this condition we need to also check that if this value is divisible by 2 okay if the value is divisible by 2 simple then what did it do we need to print here if the if divisible print less yes okay so now i need to print here which one less than and also the yes well if not then less no okay just copy this out and we need to also just remove this line here remove this block well so now the last line uh there should be no again if the value is greater than 10 we check if the value is divisible by 3 okay so if it is greater than 10 so that's mean we don't need to use here any condition here just if else block then if the value is divisible by 3 then we need to print here the greater yes otherwise greater no well so now uh, we solve these questions that's called the nested results now let's run the code here so enter a number 
So let's say I'm going to make it 12. So it's greater and yes, it's also divisible by three, right? Again, so let's say um, 10. Greater, no. Why greater? Because this A is not, uh, is equal. So that's why it's actually greater. So it's not divisible by three. So that's why it's called greater, no. So I can run the code here. So let's say um, H. And you can see here number is eight and it is less than 10 and also yes it's divided by two cool fine you solve the question well so now you're going to solve some problems some problem that you're going to solve using the evals so now we're going to solve these four problems so first problem is the user will input an integer so if the number is divisible by three and five the output will be yes otherwise the output will be no simple really very simple so let's say assign into one variable let's say number number equal to we are going to take in the input from the users so this should be the integer format so let's say int then what you need to do here if the number is divisible by three and five so that's mean you need to use here condition so if the number is divisible by three equal to equal to zero and okay both condition you need to satisfy a number is also divisible by five equal to equal to zero then what I can do, we are going to print here yes, otherwise no. Okay, just so else block should be no. So print here the no. Simple. Let's run the code here. So let's give here 15. Okay, yes, it's divisible by 3 and also 5. So let's give here divisible by 3, let's say 9. No, it's divisible by 3, but not for 5. Well, so our code is working fine here. So this is the first question's answers. So this is the first question answer. So the answer of that. And now let's going to comment out these lines. Okay, second questions. So user will input a number. If the number is positive, the output will be positive. If it is negative, the output is negative. If it is zero, the output will be zero. See, there are three conditions. If, else if, that's been elif and also the else so let's do it also so what i can do we are going to take in the input from the users so let's say int and input from the users and now we need to check that if the number is divisible by divisible or greater than okay if the number is greater than zero so this is positive number well i think it's hope sense to you so positive if it is negative, so if it is negative, so that's been ill if number is greater than zero or less than zero, sorry. If number is less than zero, so it is obviously one negative number. So that's called negative. Okay, so this is a negative number. So, and if it is zero, the output will be zero. So the condition to be satisfied, else the number should be zero. Okay, so let's try to print it out. Okay, this should be the zero. Well, fine. So let's run the code here. So let's say taking the input as a let's say 10. So this is a positive number. Again, run the code. So let's say minus 10. So this is a negative number. And let's say give here zero. So zero. Well, so our second uh, question is also solved. That's really great. Now the third questions. So you can also pause the video and also do it in your own and also check the answer. So user will input an integer. If the number is even, the number output will be the even. Otherwise it should be the odd. Simple, really very simple. So let's say number equal to taking the input from the users and also do it type casting. So let's say integer. Then we need to check that if the number is even. So how in the number is even? If the number is divisible by two. If the number is divisible by two, then the number is even. So just simple print here the even. So else just print here the odd. So what I can do, we can use here the else block. So let's say else, just simply print here the odd. Cool, so let's check this out here. 
So let's give here 12. So this is even number. So let's give here 9 odd number. Well, so our third question is also solved. So I am doing it fast because this is super easy. Now the final one. So this is the final questions. So let's see the questions. So user will input a character which is alphabet. Quite tough. If the character is vowel, the output will be vowel. And if it is consonant, it will be consonant. If the character does not fall into the alphabet, the output will be nothing. That's we need to check this. The character the user is actually giving here. Is it really alphabet or not? So you need to check that. And also check that the input the user given is a vowel or consonant. So we have two, two conditions. So first condition is we need to check first. We need to check first which one is it alphabet or not. Check alphabet. Okay, is it alphabet or not? Again, if it is alphabet, then we need to check here. If it is alphabet, then we need to check that it is a vowel or consonant. Okay. So this is obviously one nested equals. Okay. So let's see. So now you're gonna first take one input from the user. So let's say alphabet. Okay, alphabet equal to input. We don't need to do it type casting because the input function by default take one character because this is taking one string also. Because you are going to give here one just single character, so that's why we can do it. Now the next line: if the character is vowel, the output will be vowel. And also you can see here, if the character does not fall within the alphabet, so now we need to check that if the character is really vowel, if the real character is really alphabet or not. So how can I check this? So we have the alphabet A to Z and also capital A to Z. So how can I do that? So A is always lay, obviously less than Z. So how can we actually making this condition? So if the alphabet, this alphabet is is greater than a okay if it's greater than a and less than z right if alphabet is less equal z and also you need to check that also you need to check that the alphabet is also the capital if you it give here the alphabet as a capital so it, it should be also alphabet so for that you need to just copy this line so and we need to just replace it with a and replace it with jet so you have two condition the capital one and the small one so if the one condition is satisfied we can check that if the vowel or consonant so you can use here or we don't need to use here and because and checking the both conditions so now our alphabet checking is done so we can also test it out so let's say yes user input here input is an alphabet Okay, let's copy this one. Alphabet. Also comment out this line. Else, else you can see here we do we need to print here nothing. So let's say print here nothing. Okay, this one. Okay, well. So now let's run the code here. So let's say I just press here Q. You can see user input and alphabet. So let's say I am taking, I am going to put here one. You can see here nothing. Well, so that's really fine working. So now we need to check that if this value is a vowel or consonant. So the vowel is A, E, I, O, U. And also for the capital one, A, E, I, O, U. So if the alphabet is present those, then we can say that this is vowel, okay? Otherwise, it's called the consonant. So you can use here the operation that's called in that you already discussed about that in our which class, which class, which class, maybe string class. We discuss about that string one or the operator class, maybe in the operator class. Okay, you can see here in the operator class, we actually discuss about the in operator. Yep, in operator, you can see here in. So you can actually use this one. So let's say if the alphabet if the alphabet in this condition any of them any of them inside this uh, string we're going to print it it's called the vowel 
right so vowel otherwise we are going to print it as a consonant okay print it as a consonant i know this is uh, quite a bit, little bit tough for the beginner but i just make it uh tutorial little, little bit simple so that you can also think that how can you solve some problem using python programming language so let's run the code here let's say a so a is vowel so let's say jet so this is a consonant and again let's say six so this is nothing okay so our code is working also fine okay we solved the last problem also well great so this is for the conditional class conditional logic statement so now in the next topic we are going to discuss about the for and while loops so now we're going to discuss about the python loops so in python there is a two loops first one is while and second one is for loop so loops means doing the same task again and again so let's see some example of loops and we're going to solve some different types of problems okay so i already created the class here loop class.py so now what i'm going to do here uh, we are going to first discuss about the loop but before discussing about the loops let's say i'm trying to print 1 to 10 right i'm just going to print here 1 to 10 so how can i do that i just simply use here the print statement let's say print 1 then just copy this out and going to paste it here okay and going to change it here 2 then 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 10 just going to copy this okay okay that's 9 and 10 okay that's really fine if i run the code here and if i run the code here and you can see the output 1 to 10 that's really fine so let's say 1 to 100 now let's print it out how can you print it that's one question yes you can use this print statement for the hundred times but if you need to print one to this number how can you print it yes that's why looping is coming so first one we are going to discuss about the while loops so in while loops there are the two part okay so first uh part is called the logical expression part and second part is called the action part so while loop part is nothing but looks like that first you need to actually initialize here that's called initialization then you need to use here one keyword that's called while then you have the logical expression part that's mean your logical part it is logical part then you have the statement so this statement is called the actions okay so this is the syntax of while loop okay so now we're going to print 1 to 10 right we are just going to print to print from 1 to 10 using one while loops so how can you do that first you need to initialize the value so the value will start from 1 so let's say n equal to 1 then we need to use here the keyword called while so the loop will be executed after the 1 to 10 so if the value is less than equal to 10 when is less than equal to 10 i am just going to print it i am just going to print this okay so let's say i'm just going to print it here <clears throat> and you can say one okay i'm just going to print it it's just one but the problem is it it is right now infinite why because it's just printing this number one so after one we have two we have three we have four and we have five right so for that what i can do here we need to add one number after the n so n equal to n plus one so now if i am trying to print it just going to print it here cut and going to print it here so this is less than 10 so how a number is less than 10 it will actually add it one number and print the n so run the code here and you can see here 1 to 10 that's really awesome so if you make it 1000 it will print the 1000 number see in a seconds so that's why loop is coming okay so this is a task for while loop so you can see here this is the initialization part this is the logical part and this is the statement part also you can say the logical expression part and the action part so if the condition is true that's mean the logical expression part is true then the statement that's the action will happen otherwise it's not happen okay right. well so we understand the while loop in python so now we're going to solve another problem 
So you're going to add one sequence that you already do in mathematics. Let's say one uh, plus two plus three plus four plus five dot 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 dot. Okay. So we already know this sequence. Okay. So there is also one rule to do that. So how can you add the sequence? So the formula is n into n plus one, n into n plus one divided by two. So this is the formula. Using this formula, we can actually um, join them. Let's add them. So one to five. How many it is 15 so using this formula we can actually get the answer from that so let's try to do that so let's say n equal to uh, 1 n equal to 5 okay now you're going to use this formula right so let's say result equal to this one and i'm going to print it here so let's say print the n okay so let's run the code here you can see here 5 okay why 5 because we print the n so you need to print here the res that means result so 15 that's really fine. So now the question is, how can I do that using the loop? Right? How can I do that using the loop? So you can see here, we already print the statement from 1 to 10 using this while loop. Okay? So now what you need to do, we need to just change this to the 5. And also we need to take one temporary variable that's called sum. Because you're going to sum that. So you're going to sum from the 1 to 5. So that's why what you need to do. Sum value is initially 0. So that's the sum plus n that's in one then two then three and four then five it will join them so it should be n now what you can do we can print the sum simple really very simple just on the code you can see 50 in the answers because it's printing the n just from the code here right now you can see 50 that's really fine well so we solved two problems so first problem is printing from one to n okay another one is sum from one to n just in five. Well, so now we are also see that how can we use the else if an else condition in the while loop. How can I do that? So let's say I am going to uncomment this line, and now I'm going to use here and one condition that's called else. I'm just going to print here one one thing that is your loop is over. Let's say loop over. That's mean after the five, our loop is over, and it will also show this message right if i run the code here you can see loop is over and if i'm trying to also uncomment these lines you can see here our loop is over right now one two three four and five and the else condition block is actually executed so that you can use here if and else condition also in your while loop so there is another technique how can you use that now we already discussed about the list right so if i go the list class so this is the class of list but there is one thing that is we just print here the list okay we just print here list but how can i actually take that each element each element from the value you can see i just use here index the index value right index value in order to print the value of that but now the question is how can i print the each element each element in a just single line right so we can do it using iterator or you can say loop so for that now we are going to discuss about the another loop that's called for loop so this is most similar to while loop. So for loop, just we're going to actually discuss about that. So for loop. So our question is how can we print the value that is already available inside our list? So I'm going to just copy this out. I'm just going to copy this out. A. So this is called iterator. So how can we iterate that? So for that, you need to use here the keyword called loop. Sorry, for. Then you need to give here one variable name. So let's say call item in. Yeah. just you need to use this in operations and it will actually iterate the value from a to item so now if i'm trying to print the item see uh, one thing that happen, happening it will printing all the value here okay you don't need to use here a0 <coughs> or a1 or a2 like that you can use your loop to iterate the all the value that is available inside your list same thing if you're trying to print the latter one by another one by after you can also do it so let's see how can i do it so let's say a equal to let's say python i'm just going to print the a i'm just going to print the p then y then t that h that o the n so how can you do that we can use the loop so for let's say letter in a okay then i'm going to print the letter okay print the letter run the code you can see here p y t h o n really fine 
So you can also see here in Python, there is a function that's called append. So we can also uh, just grab the value from the string and we are going to store it inside one list. So how can I do that? Let's initialize here one list. That's a LST. Now you can, we can use here this function that's called the append. So that's a LST dot append. And you're going to append here the letter, right? So now if I'm trying to print it, so let's say print the LST, then you can see here all the value is inside this string, it will convert into one list. Boom, that's really awesome, right? So we can, we also discuss about the, how can we actually iterate the value from the list? And also how can you iterate the value from the string and also store it in th inside one list? Now, so when you are trying to print from one to 10 using the while loop, we, it's really simple. You can see we have one a statement, initialization, then the logic expression and the statement. But when you're trying to use the for loops, you need to also understand one functions or one method is called range. So let's say range five. So if I am trying to print it, let's say print the range five, okay? So if I run the code here, and you can say range is zero to five. That's when our range is start from zero to five. So let's say I'm going to start it from zero to, uh, let's say 55. So if I run the code, the range will start from zero to 55. So this range function is actually working like that. You don't need to use here any conditions, this kind of conditions. So this is, the range function is actually using uh, one, just add, adding one by one. After adding one by one, it will actually made one range. So if I actually use here two, so it will actually print here 10, 2, 12, then 14, then 16, like that. That means gap that two. You can see the same functions. Now, if I am trying to see it in a list, so how can I do that? I need to convert this into one list. So let's say if I'm trying to convert it into a list, <coughs> this range function, and I'm just going to remove it, just going to give here five. Just run it right now. You can see zero to four. Again, five is not, Five is not here, right? Five is not here. That means it's zero to four. Five value it will try to actually initialize here. Okay. If I actually start from one, then you can see here it will start from one to four, not into five, not five. One to four. That means it actually and minus one. It actually the raise function is pulling here and minus one. So now if I'm trying to make it as ten, and if we have the gap of one, so one to three, then five like that. So one, three, five. Seven. So you can actually print it the odd number, okay, using this list one, okay. In the range function, you can actually print it. It's really simple. Well, so we actually discuss about the range function right now. Well, so we see that how the range function actually work. So now let's use it inside our for loop. So let's say for i in range. Let's say we are going to print from one to ten. So ten. We are going to just print it right from 1 to 10. Let's try to print here. I. So now you can see here it will print from 1 to 9. Right? So you can see 1 to 9. So need to make it 11. Okay, 11. 1 to 10. So if I'm going to give here two gap, that's when you if you're trying to e print the even number. So you can see your odd number 1, 3, 5, and 9. If you start from 0 and gap should be 2, then it will be odd number. Well, that's really fine. Okay, you can also start it from two. Let's just start from two, two, four, six, eight, ten. Cool. So this is the use of the range functions in for loops. So we can also use here another statement that is actually used here. That's called back and the continue. So let's say if the value of i is equal to equal to five, I'm just going to break the loop. Just mean I'm going to just break the loop and I'm going to print here the statement that is executed. So print i. So let's say I am just going to print it from one to let's say ten. So when the value is five, it will break the loop. That's why it will print the one to five. See one to four. Sorry, one to not five because if the value of i is break, that's why it's one to five. So if I actually use here to continue, so it will skip the value. So one. Uh, one, two, three, not five is skipped and six, seven, eight, nine. So this is the basic difference between the break and the continue. So continue actually skip the value and break will actually break the loop. 
right? If you're trying to break the loops in a certain positions, you can use this break statement, okay? So now we're going to solve some problem. We're going to solve three problem, real world problem, so that your looping uh, capability will be built up. So let's see the questions. So let's see the question number one. So a list of number of one to 100 that are divisible by three, but not by five should be output. That's mean we need to print here one list. So let's solve it out. So let's say my list equal to, let's say, I'm just going to add here one empty list. So now we need to create one loop from which will start from one to 100. So for that we can use here for loops. So let's say for i in range, start from one to 100. So that should be 101. And now we need to check that if the number is divisible by three, that's in this number is divisible by three, but not by five. Just need to append it inside our list. So we need to use here one condition that's called if. So that's why we need to check this out. LST divided by divided by modulus, modulus three equal to equal to zero and and also but not by five. So that's mean LST modulo division five equal equal to zero is not equal to right. It's not equal to. So that's why it's not equal to. Not equal to five. We are going to append the value of i inside our list. So let's say LST dot append by the value okay there's some problem this not be lst this should be i so if the value is divisible by three and not divisible by five i'm just going to add the value instead of a list so now if i'm trying to print here so let's say print here the lst and now if i'm trying to run the code here and you can see the value is appeared on here which one divisible by three but not divisible by five. See, so maybe uh, you can see here six, nine, 12, and also the 18, 21, okay, 27, 33, 36, okay, which is not divisible by five. Okay, so okay, so our first question is done. It's really simple. So let's move on to the second questions. So second question is, let's say there is a list of different number. The list is following as follow. So this is our list. So from the list, a list of number less than 50 should be created and displayed in the output. So if the values are less than 15, just we need to print those value. Okay, in uh, output display as the output. Okay, we can print it simple. Just copy this list from here. So let's copy this out. And we're going to do it here. So let's say my list. Okay, equal to this list. So let's sign into the bracket and also remove this one so this is our list well so now we need to what do you do a list of number less than 50. so now we need to iterate to all the value from here so let's say item in my list okay so we need to check that if the number is less than 50 so we need to print the item right so let's say print the item so this should be the item simple so this should be the items. Okay, this should be the items, right? Simple. Just going to print it here. Let's run the code. So there's the value. It's actually less than 50. And you can see 94 is not printed yet. And 67 is not printed yet. So this is the answer for that. It's really simple. So now the final one. Let's look the following list. So this is our following list. So all the duplicate value should be removed from the list. So there is some duplicate value that we need to remove from the list. So that's why I'm just going to copy it and create here, let's say my list equal to just going to pass it here and also delete this hashtag. Okay, because this is giving me the comment. So this is our list. So now inside this list, we need to actually remove the duplicate. So duplicate means inside our list, there is a double value or duplicate value. So how can I do that? So I can actually take one empty list and inside this list, we are going to just pass here the unique value. So for that, we need to iterate to all the value from here. So let's say items in my list. Then we need to check that if this value is already available inside of a list. So if the items is not, 
okay that's it's not or not in okay not in that's been available inside our list let's say right now you can see empty list so we just put here 40 again 45 33 34 38 28 and you can see here some duplicate value so let's see uh, uh just find the duplicate value of 40 so 40 is available here i think not 45 45 is not uh also available here let's say 33 so maybe 33 is available here as a duplicate okay let's make it 40 let's say 40 is duplicate value here right now so you can see 40 and 40 is actually duplicate value just we need to find the unique one and remove the duplicate value from here so i just going to add it to all the value from my list and after that we need to check this we need to check that this value is already available inside my list if it is not available inside my list just i am going to print it okay or i am going to append it inside my list simple so i am going to append here my items so now if i am trying to print it and let's say print the a and now if you run the code here then say 40 45 you can see a 40 is not printed 40 is not printed why because we could check that if the item is not in a just we're going to append them so you can see 40 40 just going to make it item is not present in the 40 so first value come from 40 then second value come from 50 45 then how it comes from 40 it will check them is the item is already available inside my list this list so you can see 40 is already available so we are going to cut them okay we are going to just discard them and we are going to move on the next one like that okay so we solve the third problem also using the for loops so that's the basic of while loop and the for loop in python so now we're going to discuss about the python functions so what is the functions a function is a block of code which can only run how you call it so when you pass the data in the function that's called the parameter or you can say argument so based on the function parameter argument you can divide them in the four types first one is the record argument second one is called the keyword argument and third one is called default argument and final one let's call variable length argument so we are going to be discussing the four types of function parameter and argument in the next one so all right so now let's create here one python file so let's say function class dot py so now what i can do here uh, i am going to paste here the four types of function parameter argument so we are going to discussing about one by one so first we let's see how can you define a function in python so in order to define the functions you need to just use here one keyword that's called def then your function name then one parameter then you need to return here one value that your function are going to return so this is the building block of a defining function in python you can also say this as a method right because python you know python is observed in programming language so that's why you can call this method but right now i'm just going to say it functions okay so first one is called the record argument so let's define here on function so let's say add we're going to add three number so let's say a b and c and it will return here a plus b plus c so a function is executed when it is called if i run the code here you can see nothing because this function is not called here so let's say i'm going to call here so let's say add okay now let's run the code okay you can see here add missing three required positional argument call a b and c so that's why it's called the required argument that's been you need to you need to just put here the value of a b and c it's required you need to give here as it because this is compulsory you need to just give it here so that's what's called the required arguments okay we call the function but we don't give here the value of a b and c so that's why it returned me this kind of error so if i am actually use here one comma two comma three right and just run it and you can see nothing here because we don't print it on our console so let's say i'm trying to print it print it and i'm going to actually run the code right now then you can see here six one plus two plus three equal to six so this is called the record argument okay functions now next topic is called the keyword argument right so we're going to use this same 
example okay so this is called the keyword argument you can actually give here the value of a comma b comma c in in these functions so you can actually specify here a equal to one or b equal to two or c equal to three how you can see here uh let's say i want to give here a value should be uh, 20 b value should be 12 so let's say borrow 12 and 20 let's say 30 so i'm just going to assign here a value to 20 b value to 12 and c value to 34 so how it is possible it's not possible in this record argument so for that you need to use the keyword argument you can specify here the value of this argument of the functions so let's say a equal to 20 b equal to 12 and c equal to 34 so you can actually specify the keyword as argument then you can give here any kind of value so if i run the code here and you can see here 66 is the output right so that's called the record argument so how you actually give here the a specific value of the argument you can actually use this one called record argument so now let's discuss about the next one called the default argument let's say i am just going to let's say c equal to 3 okay so i am going to just give here the value of a and b so let's say 1 comma 5 i don't give here the value of 3 so it will automatically by default it take the c value as a 3 run the code you can see 9 so now if i am give, going to give here it will taking the input as a 10 right so that's called the default argument well so now the last one is called variable length argument so let's discuss about that so in the variable level argument or a parameter you don't need to give here the value here okay you don't need to give here the value you can see you give the value as a parameter as a argument you don't need to give here you can use here the star sign so let's say args args then you can actually uh, let's say try to print it so let's say try to print it print the type of our args and when i call the functions uh, let's give here some values so let's say 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6 comma 7 or 8 so if i'm trying to print it and you can see a none and class is nothing but a tuple if i'm trying to give here one list so you can see here class is nothing but tuple it will actually the arc keyword actually nothing but taking the input as a tuple right because this is a function and this is a sign of tuple so that's why it's taking the input as a tuple so when you use here the variable and argument all the value you can give here it should be one tuple so you can also convert it into the list okay so if i'm trying to do that you can convert it into the list so you can see here we just convert it into the list then your type should be the one list okay object is not iterable okay i think i need to uh, store it inside one variable so let's say temp and now if i am trying to uh, print the type of temp let's say temp okay and if i run the code you can see a non type class is non type because it's right now non type because it's the functions and you can see a tuple right so we can change this value inside our this args keyword right so for that if i am trying to make it list and if i run the code here and you can see here you can see here this is one list okay so it is converted into one list so now we are going to taking the input from the users and we are going to check that we are going to just add those number so how can i do that so when you are trying to add them we need one default temporary variable so let's say sum then we are going to iterate to all the value from here from the arcs so let's say i in arcs then what i can do we are going to sum it so sum equal to sum plus i that you already do in our for loop class then finally we are going to return here the sum okay so if i'm trying to print it like that then and now if i run the code here you can see here 36 so you can see here you don't need to give here any parameter argument you can see here by default you have the three values just you are going to add it but right now you don't need to give here any kind of uh, length of variables you just you can give here it's up to you okay you can also convert it into one list okay so let's say 9 comma 10 comma 11 
like that and you can also add it simple really very simple so when you need to give here some value you don't know how the land should be you can actually use this one called the variable land argument okay so now we are going to discussing to another important function that's called first one is called map and second one called filter so both are the <clears throat> functions are mostly similar but just filter have some difference it will take just only for two values and map will take all the values as argument right so now what i can do first we're going to discuss about the map so inside the map this map is taking one function then it will take one iterator or you can as the iterator you can actually use the list so now i'm going to define here one list so let's say my list equal to i'm just going to group here some value so let's say 2 comma 4 comma 6 comma 7 comma 8 comma 9 comma 10 okay just i'm going to put it here so i am going to just make it a square of them just a square them 2 is going to convert into 4 and 4 is going to convert into 16 so how can i do that so first you need to call here the map functions so this map is taking one functions and one iterator so now you're going to do the square of that so for that what you need to do you need to keep define here one function that's called a square and now we are going to pass the value here let's say x and you're going to say that x into x okay we are going to return it now we are going to actually call this function inside our map then also our list that you are going to pass here iterator that's when it will take one of the value from here and it will pass this um, functions and it will give here one value so now if i'm trying to let's say this is our new list okay so now if i'm trying to print it so let's say print the new list and if i run the code here and you can see a map objects right right now it's map objects so if you're trying to see it in list so you need to convert it into the list really very simple okay just run the code here and i can see 4 16 36 49 64 81 and 100 and it will convert them into the score so when you're actually using uh, this kind of scenario when you have a list you need to use your own functions as your uh, iterator you can actually use this map functions so now we're going to discuss about the filter functions in python so let's take one example so you're going to check that if the number is even or not in a in a list and you could also uh we are going to also print the list so let's say we have one list so let's say my list so which one is start from let's say 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6 comma 7 8 comma 9 let's say 10. Oh. so now what i can do we are going to check that every value inside our list and also we're going to print those value who which number is actually even so what i can do we can use your filter because this filter is checking the value is true or not if the value is true it will take them otherwise it will cut them so for that we need to define our functions so let's say def is even okay so we take one value x so if this x is divisible by 2 so that's written here true and also we know that filter is actually uh, return here the value actually taking the value if this is true otherwise it will discard them but for the map it's not so else what are you going to do else we are going to return here the false so you need to write here the false else block here return false now if i am trying to put it here is even and also my list simple i'm just going to eat very fast because i think right now you are more familiar with the functions so that's why so let's attempt and now if i'm trying to print it temp and the code I get the filter objects right so if i'm trying to convert it into the list so see this is one list simple boom two four six eight ten so using this one you can also check that is it a prime number or not so it's your homework you need to check that if it is a prime number or a not a prime number so it's your homework so i just go it for even so if you're trying to check this for odd is odd so how can you do that is odd just make this one not okay so run the code you can see here this is the odd number so this is all about the functions in python so the next video we are going to discussing about the file so now we're going to discussing about the files in python
so let's go on the base code so well so let's create here one empty python file here so let's say file class dot py so in order to handle the file we need to create one empty file here so just we're going to create here one empty text file so let's here test dot txt so you're going to write something here so let's say i am Mishu Dhar Chandu. Okay, so I'm going to just save it. I'm going to close it. So I'm going to actually read this file using Python. So there is some rules that you need to follow. So first you need to open the file, then you need to read the file, and you need to also close the file. So let's open it. Let's open the file. So our file name is called test.txt. So now you need to give here one mode so which mode you are trying to do so we are going to first read it so what is available inside our file so that's why you are going to use here one keyword or you can say alphabet called r so when you're trying to read them you need to use here the mode as a r now let's assign into one variable that's called the let's say my file okay so now if i am trying to print it that's been if i'm trying to print it it's not printed yet when you actually open the file, you need to also read it, right? So let's say my file dot read. Now assign into one variable that's called let's say content. Okay. So you read the file. Now you need to also close the file. So let's say my file dot close. So you need to follow the strategy, then you can actually handle the file. So if I am trying to print it, the content that is available inside my file, I can. So if you run the code here, you can see here I am Mishudar Chandu. That is already available inside my text. .txt. So let's say see you at knowledge doctor YouTube channel. Okay. So if I am save it and close it and run the file here again, and you can see here I am Mishudar Chandu. See you at knowledge doctor YouTube channel. If I comment out this line and run the code, you can see here we can also read it okay so you it's up to you it's better you can close the file it's better so otherwise it should be in the right mode so let's run the code here again and you can see here i am michelle chandu see you at knowledge to youtube channel right so if i'm trying to add here some text okay just i am going to make it empty right now okay just empty file now inside this empty file i am trying to write something so for that you need to uh, actually use here one property that's called the w then you can use instead of using read you can actually use here the write okay now inside this write better let's say i'm just going to copy this one i am mishudar chandu okay then you can see uh, our text file is right empty so now if i'm trying to run the code you can see a 21 so 21 is nothing but the content uh, size so if i go on this text or txt you can see i am mishudar chandu okay d u is missing or o is missing so 22 right now and you can see here i am mr chandu it is converted here okay so this is the writing mode of the file so when you're trying to add here something inside your file you can use here alter so let's say i'm going to add here alter so let's say uh see you of knowledge of youtube channel just i'm going to write it so change it and i'm going to run the code 39. So if I go on here, you can see I'm Michelle Chandu and see you at Knowledge Doctor YouTube channel. You can see it already automatically added here. You can also alter. That's when you're trying to update it, right? So if I give here on a space, okay, and on the code here again, you can see here 40. That's mean it will also read the space, right? So you can see here, see you at Knowledge Doctor YouTube channel. It's added here, right? Because this is already added. Well, so this is the alter method, or you, you can alter it. So you can see there are so many lines you can also do one shortcut so using the with keyword so let's say with open and we're going to use here text dot txt so now you can use here your mode so let's say i'm trying to read it as uh, let's say my file okay then i'm going to print it so i'm going to just print it my file dot read just i'm going to use this my file so let's say print 
my file dot read okay and now if you run the code here and you can say i'm michel chando and see you at another youtube channel so this is another way to actually write in the file so let's say if i am trying to give here one that file is not available inside my uh, directory so you can see here no source file or directory text one dot txt so this is called the error handling so how can you actually handle them so in python there is a three block called try then it have the accept and another block is called finally so we can using this we can actually uh, handle the exception so the exception is coming here this is not called the no source file in the directory that's been file not found error so what i can do we are going to just put it inside this try block so let's say try then what i can do we can use here one accept block so okay accept okay accept and our error is nothing but the file not found exception so if this error is happening we are going to just print here one message file not found okay file not found well so this is well so if i run the code here you can see here file not found so if i actually uncomment it and run the code here you can see i am michel chandu see you at another youtube channel so this is called the error handling how can you handle the error so now let's see the final one finally so let's say finally if i'm trying to print it so this is called the default block put runs well okay so if i run the code here and you can see here i am michel chandu and code runs well so if i run the code uh to change something here let's say text one to txt you can see a file not found and code runs well our code is working fine but file is not found the finally block is nothing but default block for which you activate it so if you don't see actually write here anything here as the exception so you can actually use here the exception okay e exception you can actually give here exceptions just this one and run the code here you can see file not found the exception is working and text.txt you don't need to actually give here which kind of exception actually happening here so you can see i am michel chando and code runs well the exception is not exception is not actually uh present on here so if i am trying to change uh trying to print the exception and it also run so let's see 12 and you can see here class exception this is exception class okay exception let's say s e so if i'm trying to change uh actually try to print it e and you can see here no source file in directory so this is our exceptions so you can also take the exception using this formula okay so this is called the error handling in file so our python course is going to be and just to discuss about the two topics so operating system that's the os module and also the data module and then we are going to jump on the five projects that we actually promises to do that so let's move on that so now let's discuss about the os module in python so os mean operating system so there are three types of operating system like windows linux or mac so currently i'm using here windows so i'm going to do the coding for windows so let's go to the bs code so now let's create here one python file so let's say os class.py so because os is one kind of module so for that you need to import it so when you're trying to import the module something from your library you need to use here import okay let's say import os okay os mean operating system so if you are trying to check this the current directory that you are working here that's your working directory you can use here os dot get cwh cwd so it will actually give you give you the path of your current directory so if i'm trying to print it so let's say print os dot get cwh c -C -H -C -W -D. so it will give you the current working directory so you can see here my current working directory is this one e colon and python crash course so this is my working directory so if you are trying to change the directory let's say i'm going to change the directory okay i'm going to change the directory so let's comment out this line let's say os dot change dir that's been changed directory if you're trying to change the directory so you can use here let's say i'm going to change the directory uh, from python crash course this one okay so let's say python okay python product so my directory is right now changes okay 
So if I run the code, nothing is happened. But when I am trying to print the OS dot, let's say get CWH, and if I run the code, okay, CWH and uh, CWD. Sorry, why I'm talking about H? You can see here right now the current directory is converted into Python crash course and Python projects. So right now my current directory is inside these Python projects. So now I am trying to actually uh, create one folder. So for that I can use here another command that's called mkd. Let's see make directory. So inside this I am going to create another directory that's called uh, project. Okay. Let's run the code. It executed. So if I go on here, you can see a project one folder is created. Okay. One file folder is created. That's called project. Cool. So now uh, let's uh, see another one. So let's say os dot make deeds. If you're trying to create many deeds or many directory, you can use this one. So let's say inside that I am going to create here one comma two comma three comma four comma five. So let's run the code. And if I go on here, you can see here one, and beside that you can see a two, three, four, and five. So this is our working directory. So you can see a Python project, and inside this you can see here a folder one, two. Three, four, and five. Okay, because we use here the make deers. So inside that, it will create five folder. Right. So now you can see here we have one file that's called text.txt. So let's say I am trying to actually remove this. So let's say we can use here os dot remove. We can use here os dot remove, and we need to give here the file name. So let's say text dot txt. Okay, I am just going to remove it. Right. So I need to also change the directory path. So for that, I'm just going to comment out this line and I'm going to call it. And you can see here the file is removed, right? So now uh, let's create it again. So let's say test. Okay, this is inside the folder, right? So I think I need to delete it. Okay, I need to create outside the folder. So let's say test.txt. Well, so we see how to remove the file from your directory. So now let's see how can you rename that. Let's say my file name is text.txt. We are going to remove uh, rename it. So let's say you can use here rename. <coughs> so for that you need to give here your file name. So let's say text.txt. We are going to change it to the let's say test12.txt file. Okay. Or let's say test one two dot py file like that so if i'm trying to run the code here and you can see test dot txt file is converted into one python file that's really awesome okay cool so let's make it test dot py to txt right run the code and you can see convert it right so let's say i am going to convert this set class to the text file so let's say set class.py to set.txt. So I'm just going to rename it, it. Okay, it's now converted into the txt file. See, all the file, all the Python code is converted into the txt file, right? So you can see our cross, cross sign is. And now I'm going to actually again make this txt file to the set class to Python file. Okay, let's say py. And let's run the code here. Okay, this system cannot find a specific class that's called set text or txt because this is set. Okay, cool. Run the file. Yep, set class again comes. It's really good. Okay, we also discuss about that. So now let's see base path. So os dot path dot let's say base name. Okay, so let's say I am trying to or trying to use this one python crash course as the base name and also um, if i run the code here and you can see my python crash course so if i'm trying to add here the let's say uh, text dot txt i can also do that the crash course but it's not actually uh, changes the directory it just changes this directory one so if i'm trying to print it and you can see here, this is not changes. 
okay you can see a python crash course and text dot okay test dot yes you need to use here this one and one also slash i think it will work now and you can see a text dot txt just mean it will taking the base name that your file is located it's just actually changing your files it will actually searching for your file name so you can see here inside this folder i have one file that's called text.txt so it will return the just your file name well so now the next one is called os.path dot let's exist os.path dot exist that is this is this path is really exist or not so let's say i am trying to use this one so this is already exist okay i think i need to delete it and let's say try to print it out so it will actually give here one boolean value see the path is actually available so you can check this using this os.path.exist so you can see true so if i'm trying to change this something here and on the code you can see false because this path is not exist well then we can also check that is file or is directory you can also check this out okay then you can also join them so let's say os.path.join okay path.join so even let's say we are going to join our current directory to the file name so how can i do that so we can actually define here let's say did equal to our current directory let's say this one directory and we're going to add here the file name that's called tags.txt okay we are going to just join them so if i run the code you can see here this is added and this is the current directory it's not changes yet so if i am trying to print it and you can see here just one thing your directory is added to here okay text.txt right so this is done so let's say if i'm trying to make it text one two and you can see text one two okay it will change this time well so we also discuss about the joins so now discuss about the split one so let's say split os dot path dot split so if i'm trying to give here any path so let's say give here this path and just run it just try to print it out and also just run this and you can see here it will actually split the path you can see this one this path is split it and this part also yes sir okay it will actually split them so let's make it this one and try to check this out you can see it split it the this one the directory and this our file name okay so using this split uh, method you can actually split your directory and your file name also so this is all about the os module in python i just make it so speed if you have any uh, worries you can also change your speed level from the youtube okay so next one we're going to discuss about the date time module then you're going to close the, our python crash course then you're going to jump on the five different projects using python for beginners so now let's discuss about the date time module in python so this is the last topic of the python crash course then you're going to jump on the five beginner level project using python so let's go on the base code so let's create here one python file here so let's say date time class dot py so because date time is a one kind of module so for that you need to also import it from date time so from date time we are going to import here that date so first let's see the operation of date so if i am using date dot okay you can see here today then you can see a strip time then you can see so many function or so many function is actually available here so let's use here the today one so let's say today and if i'm trying to assign into one variable let's call temp that's a temporary variable and if i'm trying to print it it will show me the date of today okay so today is first december okay okay first december so that's why it's showing up you can see your first is 22 year and 12 in month and the one is the day okay so if i am trying to see the year month and the day separately so i can use here temp dot 
you can see here let's say month i can also print it so what did you do you need to use here this inside this one print functions okay then if i run the code you can see here the month and if i'm trying to say the day so i can also see it one and if i'm trying to see the year so i can also see it okay so this is the year right so now if i am trying to see the date and time in a same module so i can also import here the date time so date time so for that i need to use here the date time dot now okay and now i can see the month year and also the minute and the seconds also so month let's say right now the minute and let's say the second okay and you can also see the hour so you can see a minute is right now 52 okay i think sorry it minute the minute is this one and uh, right now it's actually 12 12 so that's why show the 000 right now i am just recording the videos so that's why and the seconds okay and you can see here this is the minutes right so if i am trying to change this to the hour okay and the seconds and hour is right now 23 okay and it is 60 second right and if i'm trying to print the temp dot let's say minute maybe minute so if i run the code here and you can see 27 um 23 that's means right now 11 57 and 32 second at night so if i run the code here again so you can see it's converted to 43 so i don't know why it's actually coming up here okay so just run the code here again and you can see right now converted to 52 so i think right now 55 57 58 59 and 0 right now it converted into 23 58 so to me left then 2 december <laughs> okay so we can also see it one by one from here so there's another module called time we can also import it so import time so we can also format our time in a string format so let's use uh, let's see something here let's call timer okay so let's say time dot time so it will show up the cpu running time so let's say if i'm trying to print it and it will show the time it's taken to run this program in a microseconds and you can see how the program is taking this kind of microsecond to run the code again and you can see this one so if i'm trying to copy this out and let's check this out in the another class so let's say uh -huh, this one okay i'm just going to print it okay i need to also import it here right that's the input time and if i'm trying to run the code here this variable data type dot py enter two numbers so let's say 10 12 and you can see the time is taken to execute this program okay so this is the uses of time dot time and we have another one called the get time get time or gm time okay so gm time is nothing but give us the value in a struct format so you can see your struct time so if you're trying to see it in a string format your time and your date your day you can use here another functions that's called time dot strf time so this is called strf time in a string format it will take one string then also your time so if i am trying to save it inside one variable called t then if i am trying to pass it here and also i need to give here some format of a string so fast format of a string to for hour is i then for minute we can use here m capital m for second we can use here capital s then we have the pm or am we can use here p and percent is d and percent is b is for nothing but is it is a january or the february or or the bars like that then we can use here the year for year you can use here percent is y in a small letter so if i'm trying to print it if i'm trying to print it you can see here if I run the code here, you can see here uh, the time, time, and the seconds. Okay, I think this is the seconds. Okay, seconds and the day, day. Just mean this day and the month and the year, right? So you can see here. I think if I'm trying to use here H, so let's run the code. You can see the hour. Okay. So there is a one another interesting thing that is if I am trying to import the strip time from the time module, 
we can also do it let's say from time we can input here the strip time you can also do it in a short way so let's say if i'm trying to use here from from time i am going to import here the strip time we can also do that strf time okay this one and if i run the code here it will also working fine okay i this time is not actually working here right now so this is gm time but right now gm time is not working so why are you actually trying to use here the strip time you can also use here another format this format you can also use that to show the time so let's say if i'm trying to print it and also go on here and just run the code and you can see the time is appeared here this is my local time so using the strip time you can also do this thing in a in this way to in order to get the local time but if you are trying to get the gm time you can actually use this formula to get the gm time okay so this is the whole tutorial uh, that's my whole course so now we're going to jump on the latest five project for the beginner level so this is the whole course um, it takes so many times to making for these whole courses so my request is to watch the tutorial full till the end otherwise you can save the video on your uh, youtube bookmark okay and don't download it right <laughs> because you know in youtube your time is very important so that's why my request is to just save the video and you can see it in day by day because it's five hour long course maybe i just not actually doing the editing part here so maybe five hour it will take so it's better you can practice more and practice more even though i make these uh, courses for just for beginners level and also i'm trying to solve some problem after each exercise so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial so now let's move on the five simple and basic project and because of the time consumedness i'm i'm not making this out very cool and if you have any problem or if you need more projects you can also watch my full uh, youtube tutorial because there are so many lots of projects based on deep learning machine learning and also the open cv so i'm just going to make some beginner level project for the beginners who were actually watching this full tutorial so thank you so just go on that so now we're going to build our first project that's called python clock so for that we are going to actually discuss about one simple gui framework that's called tk inter so using the tk inter we are going to making this clock this digital clock so for that we are going to first import our tk inter and from the tk inter we're going to import all the module then what I can do, we are going to create one simple skin of the tick enter. And using this tick enter skin, you're going to set our clock inside this tick enter frame. So let's say root equal to tk. And also give here one title. So let's say root dot title. That's our GUI frame title. So let's say clock. Okay, we will always clock. And then we have to use here the main loop. Well, so now let's run the code here and you can see your on frame is appeared that's called clock you can see here inside the title you can see a clock so now inside this frame we are going to set our time and this signed time should be the continue okay so for that what you can do we need to import here the time module here that we already discussed about that so from the time we are going to first import here the strip time because we're going to make it uh how our minute second and also pm or am so let's say strip time now what i can do we are going to first create one level then after creating the level then you're going to actually pack it right so let's say level dot pack so beside uh first if you're trying to pack the level you need to also create the level right so let's say inside our level so let's say level equal to you can use here the level one and inside that it will take some parameter as our command so first parameter is nothing but our root then you need to give your one background so let's say background you can give your background color so let's give your background color as let's say white so now our text so which kind of text that you're going to give here so let's say foreground so inside the foreground you're going to use here the let's say white or black one okay let's say black background so now what you can do uh, we're going to pack this label in our anchor tag as a true that's in the center so our anchor should be the center so well so now we're going to actually print here one text on the middle of our screen so we are going to define one function that's called time functions so what i can do we are going to config this label so let's say label.config 
and this config taking one text so let's say the text we are going to see that that's called python clock so let's say python clock and we're going to call this function after this pack so now let's run the code here and you can see the python clock well that's really good so python clock at the center so now using this formula we are going to now set the time here right just going to set the time so for that what i can do we are going to actually uh calling this strip time so let's say strip time so this is strip time and inside that what are you going to do we're going to use here this formula that's called m percent h then percent is m that's been hour hour and the minute then we have also our second and then we have our am or pm okay so let's assign into a variable that's called a string and now we're going to copy this string and i'm going to pass it here and i'm going to run the code here so you can see here the time is appear on here in international time so right now this is the time and this is the am or pm but the problem is this time is not actually what do you call the time is not actually converted or you can say updated so after one second we are going to fast updating this gui frame so for that what you can do you can also update our level so let's say level dot we are going to actually update it so for that we can use here update or you can use here adapter so after 100 uh, millisecond we are going to update our time this time function so it will actually update the time you can see a time is right, right now updated after one second so we can also make this clock bigger so for that we need to also change our level so we can use here one font property that is available here so let's use your one font so we can use here uh, the font let's say use here one simple font let's call you can use here array i don't know array is supported here or not and the font size and your font weight let's say give here bold and just run the code here okay that's working and you can see the time is appear on here that's really cool okay at the center you can also give here another font let's say calibri you can also use this font okay code is running you can see the font is quite little bit okay okay so this is a digital clock that's really good so that's our first project so now we're going to make one simple program for countdown timer so for that we need one module that's called time so we need to also import it so the user actually give here one input in a integer format and this is, a, this is the second at how many seconds that you're going to wait so i am first going to taking the input from the users so let's say taking the input from the users so let's say enter your second okay or enter second okay so this enter second is actually now taking as a string format we need to also convert it into the integer then what i can do we are going to define here on functions so this function i should give here the count line okay so let's say def let's say count time and this count time taking the second that is uh, given by the users so let's say this is the users so this is the user time so let's say user time so let's make it user time also we're going to pass it inside of our countdown so let's say count time okay and inside this i am going to just call this one user time okay so let's make try to print something here let's say print uh, function calling just for checking so if i run the code here you can see here okay enter a second let's say 12 function calling done so if i am trying to print the second so let's say int user time user let's say user time and if i'm trying to run the code and let's say enter seconds let's say 12 and you can see 12 is also printing and function calling fine so it's working so now we need to uh, first create one infinite loop okay why because let's say i give here 12 so i need to just minus it from one 
just one then ten then nine just we need to make it minus from the from the seconds we need to just minus one seconds so for that what i can do we can use here the loop just we are going to loop through that after loop through that we're going to calculate the time we need to actually convert these seconds into the seconds because maybe let's say i'm just going to give here as a 1000 okay so 1000 is just give here as the integer we need to also convert it into the seconds that how many seconds here okay so for that we need to just convert it based on the hour okay so that's why we need we can we need to use here uh, one method that's called the deep mod so let's say deep mod and inside that i'm just going to pass my user time and i'm going to change this to the uh, 16 and the 16 is take give me the answer as a minutes and also the seconds okay so let's say minutes and the second so if i'm trying to print it so let's say print it print it let's say minutes and the seconds so if i'm run the code here run the code here let's say 12 seconds and you can see here zero is nothing but our minute and 12 is nothing but a second so if i run the code here and let's say i give here let's say uh, 360 okay so it will give me the sixth hour okay that is sixth hour and zero seconds that's really fine so just we need to make it as a count time count timer like that so for that we need to use this deep mod okay so now we are going to actually format our time so let's say uh, we are going to format the time in a one colon okay and also you can add, format it okay so for that what i can do we are going to take the two space that is six zero six and the zero zero two format so how can i do that we can use here the format specifier here so let's say i'm going to use this format specifier and i'm just going to pass it here so let's say just cut this out and i'm going to pass it here and i'm going to use here the format specifier that's a format and i'm going to give you the minutes and the seconds now i'm going to convert this 6 to 06 and 0 to 00, 00. so how can i do that i can use this formula that's a 0 to d in the two point of decimals and i'm going to add here one colon then also two point of decimals below and if i'm trying to print it so let's say trying to print it here uh print it so it can be shown like that just white just on the code you can see here enter the seconds so let's say 360 again you can see here 06 and 00 now it is a standard time now we are going to uh because this is a count timer countdown timer so that's why you need to uh minus from the user time so let's say user time equal to user time minus one okay it will actually taking it actually high and it will actually stop so high and the user time is zero so high and the user time is zero then it will actually stop so if i now run the code here just run the code and if i give you 12 f and you can see here 0 and 12 is printed and you can see user time if i'm trying to print the user time so let's say try to print the user time okay user time and now if i run the code here you can see here let's enter 12 f and you can see 11 it's just minus for one times so because this is the the, the tax is actually happening again and again so that's why we need to use here looping so for that what you can do here we can let's say while okay while the user time okay user time so how in the user time we can actually do this tax high in the user time is zero okay by default high in it is zero then we can make it uh, we can just stop them okay so we can also use here time dot slip we can use a time to sleep after one second to sleep the program then it will restart the program again and again otherwise it will show the full time is actually in a manner way if i run the code here you can see just to white so let's say 12 and you can see it will print the old time okay so if i'm trying to sleep the program for one second so how, how, what do i need to do you need to use here the time dot sleep so let's say time dot sleep one second so if i am now run the code here you can see here let's say enter the seconds let's say 12 and you can see uh, 012 011 then 09 08 07 06 05 and 03 02 and 01 okay so this is the countdown timer so you can also show here one print statement that's countdown timer is done so let's say time is finished okay okay so if i run the code here again 
and let's say 10 seconds so after 10 seconds you go 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 stop time is finished okay so this is really cold okay so this is one simple program to how can you make one countdown timer so now in this one you're going to see how can you generate one password that's mean we're going to create one simple program for generate the password a strong password right so let's make one file let's say password uh, generator dot py so because you're going to generate the password and the password is consisting of letter digit and the special character so for that we need the string so we are going to import the string here so let's import a string and inside this string we can actually uh, taking the letter and the digits and also the special character so for that let's say string dot let's say ASCII letter then we have our string dot our digit so there should be the digits then we have also our strings dot special character that's called the punctuation marks so that's called punctuations so let's assign into a variable so that's called this one is a special uh, this is the letter so let's say l and this is our digit so let's make it inside the d and this is our punctuation just a special character so let's say special sc okay so now what are going to do we are going to join those and create one password so let's say alphabet okay let's say our alphabet or password let's say password okay password equal to uh, this l then we have the d and we have the sc so you can also say that this is alphabet because this is consisting of, of the l d and sc so let's say i'm going to make it let's say l p h a so if i am trying to print the alpha print let's say l p h a let's say bet okay i'm just going to make it one if i run the code here you can see here all the letter okay it's not printed right i don't know why i just run the code here again and you can see all the alphabet let's me ask letter and the digits and all the punctuation mark is printed so now what i can do we are going to uh, first make one password and the password is consisting of using the ascii letter digit and the punctuations so for that we need another module that's called the secrets okay let's say secrets so secrets is actually help us to choose uh the value that's been that we chose the value from the randomly inside our alphabet okay so now what i can do we need to initialize here one password length so let's say password length so let's say password length so let's our password length should be the 16 let's say 16 our password length so now what i can do based on the length we are going to now uh, create one loop because based on the loop we are going to join all the letter we are going to first choose the one letter from the our alphabet then after that we are going to store it inside one variable so let's say define here one temporary variable let's call temp and this is one empty string now inside the empty string we are going to join them that is using our secret module we can actually select the value from our list so for that we can use here the loop so for i in range so the range is actually coming from the password length so there should be password length okay now what i can do we are going to first choose the value using the secrets so let's say secrets dot choice so you're going to take the choice from the alphabet the one value alphabet then what i can do we are going to join it in our password so for that we can use here simple one that's called tam equal to tam plus okay secret choice this one so if i am trying to print it so let's say trying to print the tam okay so just going to print it and if i run the code here you can see here the password is generated right you can see the password is generated okay right that's great you can also use here one function that's called the join okay you're just going to join it uh, using this space you can also use here this join one so let's say join so if you run this code again 
So just join it and run the code again and you can see here the value is coming up here okay in a manner way okay in a manner way so you can see the password this is a 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 password okay so you can see a strong password is actually generated see okay how low it is okay so this is a simple program for password generations uh, this is for complete beginner that's why i chose it so the next one we're going to follow, we are going to go to some medium level so we are going to create on camera it's really interesting so let's create on camera so now we're going to create on camera so let's create here one python file let's say camera.py so in order to create the camera you need to one module that's called the opencv and also you need to install this module so for that if you are using a uh, pip or if you install the python correctly on your system just open your command prompt cmd and your python shell your terminal should be open if you check that your python is installed or not you can type here python so make sure that when you actually run this code you need to also install the library okay so the library name is called pip install opencd python so make sure that when you actually install this library you just need to do this command it's called pip install opencd python i hope you are a beginner if you don't know what is pip you can just go on google and search for that so in, you, if you're trying to use an external package in your python program you just need to use this formula pip install and opencd python and opencd python is nothing but the uh, package if you are trying to use this so using this package now you're going to create one camera right so so for that you need to first import here the opencv so in opencv you cannot write here import opencv you need to import it as a cb2 so how you actually import it now you're going to create on camera so that's why you need to create one video capture objects if you know the basic of ops concept in c or c plus plus so you also follow that so you need to use here cb2 dot video capture so i know it's basic it totally some advanced level some advanced levels but i make it simple so that you can actually get very excitement to learn pythons so let's say in fact this i'm just going to put here zero you can also put here one if you have any extra webcam so let's say video equal to cb2 dot video capture so let's say we need to create here one infinite loop so let's say while true and now you're using this video you're going to read the frame from the our webcam and this webcam it actually give here the three two values one is nothing but a boolean value and another one is our frame so now what i can do we are going to show it so for that to show that we can use here one method that's called cb2.imshow and inside that we can say that frame and our this is our frame name okay and now we can we need to actually add here one white key that your window or pop-up should be when the camera is actually open your pop-up should be white on so for that you can use here cb2 dot uh, wait key and let's say uh, we can give here let's say one okay so let's assign into one variable that's called k so k is nothing but because of this is called keyboard binding function so because this is the infinite loop we need to also bracket right so for that if you are trying to press something from the keyboard because uh, the infinite loop is actually infinite okay you, you need to also bracket this out so if you're trying to stop the window you need to use this one keyboard binding functions otherwise you need to use here the tax bar right so that's why if k equal equal to ord so ord is taking the input from the keyboard okay i think it's quite tough for you if you're a beginner so just bracket and then you need to actually uh, destroy all the windows and also you need to release the video okay so release the video and also cb2 dot destroy all windows okay so if so now let's run the code and see that our camera is opening or not so just click on here and i hope you will open the webcam okay webcam allow access done wow cool so you can see here our webcam is actually on right now and it also show me up right so now our fourth one the fourth project is done now we're going to do the interesting one we are going to take one countdown timer and when the countdown timer is actually finished we're going to take the picture of that so that's very interesting so that's why i do this one like creating one camera so now let's see how can we do that so this is the final one the final project that's called countdown timer based one webcam so now we're going to make one countdown timer based camera so for that we need our camera code that we do earlier so just copy this and I'm going to paste it here 
Okay. So this is the code for creating camera. So now what the logic that you're going to be using here. So if anyone press T from the keyboard, we are going to take the pictures after few seconds. So let's say we have that we have one variable called timer. So let's say timer equal to let's say 10 seconds. So let's actually convert it into the integer. So let's integer and 10. So right now it is integer. Okay. So now what I can do if anyone press T from the keyboard, if k equal to equal to ORD T. So what I can do, we are going to create one loop and after that second, we are going to take the pictures of the person or of the scenario, right? So now what I can do, let's say, uh, mm -hmm -hmm, what I can do, what I can do, we are going to create one loop. So let's say while, so timer is, is actually less equal zero. That's in high, it is greater than zero, greater than zero. Then we are going to uh, make our timer should be timer minus one. Okay. Okay. After if loop, we are going to make this timer equal to timer minus one. But how can you do that? After one second. So we can use here time dot sleep, right? But the problem is how are we actually using here time dot sleep? Our frame, that's our video frame is also stopped. Okay. And now how can you actually use here this formula? This one conditions timer is greater than or equal to 10. You also need to create our camera. So for that, I'm just going to copy this code because this is another part. So that's why I need to call it. So now you can see here our camera is right now on in this, in this one. So how can we actually use here time.sleep, time.sleep, okay, just time.sleep. It will actually stop this whole frame for one second. Then what will be happen? Uh, after one second, it will stop. After one second, it will stop. After one second, it will stop. After 10 seconds, after 10 times, it will blink. It will blink the frame, right? So if I am trying to show it, it will be better. Okay, so time dot sleep. So let's run the code. Time to sleep for one second. So now if I run the code here, just move the webcam and just run the code here. And you can see one thing that is, uh, how can I press T from the keyboard? And you can see it will actually stop the frame, right? So that's the problem. So we need to also fix this out. So for that, we can actually take in the previous, uh, the previous value of the time. Then based on the previous value, we are going to show the frame. So for that, what you can do, we need to also check the previous time. Uh, how and the while loop is actually on. So let's count the previous time. So let's say time dot time. So we let's store into one variable. So how and we press the T from the keyboard. We need to just calculate the time and how and it will move through this timer. We need to also calculate the current time. So for that, let's say current time. So let's say car equal to time dot time. And if this time is greater or equal to one, then you're going to actually uh, minimize this. That's when you're going to minus the one from the timer. So let's say if this current time is minus previous time, that's the previous time is greater equal to one. So we're going to make this previous time to the current time. Okay. We're going to make this previous time to the current time. Okay. Then we are going to actually minus one from the timer. Okay. So we can also use here the one white key. So let's say CB2 dot uh, white key. So white key and inside this let's give here 1000 or 100. And we can also give here one put text. So we can actually show, uh, show the countdown timer as a text. So we can use here CB2 dot put text. I think if you're a beginner, it's quite difficult for you to actually understand. So frame, so text, so our text is nothing but our timer. Then we have our uh, arc, that's mean our coordinate. So let's give here 200 cos 250. So this is the coordinate. And uh, let's say font face. So in CB2, there are so many font face. So let's say CB2 dot font hash complex. And a scale, let's say give here seven scale. And let's say color. So which color? Let's say 02550, like any kind of color you can give. Then the thickness, let's give here four and the line type. So let's say CB2 dot uh, line AA, line AA, use this one just, okay. So now if I am trying to run the code, 
webcam access allowed so if i am trying to press t from the keyboard and you can see countdown timer is actually activated see so after this countdown timer you're going to take the pictures of that so now if i press q from the keyboard you can see the keyboard q so you can see this slope is gone okay that's really fine so now we need to take the pictures right so let's say let's say let's say uh if this one else after the seconds so let's say else so we are going to take the picture and store it inside our uh what is in call which is what's called we are going to actually store it inside our directory so in loop you can also use here the else conditions so what i can do we are going to copy this code copy this code and just copy this one okay uh, then we are going to use this one so let's format it out we can use here the elif right elif okay then what i can do we can actually use here the cb2.im right cb2.im right and inside that i need to give here one name that's a camera and i need to give here the frame it's now at this frame and now it's done so now let's run the code okay i think after a few seconds so that after few seconds it will actually automatically disappear we can actually give here 1000 or 1 whatever so now i am going to actually run the code i think it's better we can give the wet key before this one okay then i'm going to run the code here so webcam access allowed so if i take uh press t from the keyboard and countdown timer is started nine seven six five four three two one and boom okay it will take in the picture or not okay we got some error here okay we got the error because we forget to give here the our image format name so that's why we got this error so let's run the code here again okay let's run the code webcam accesses press t 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and boom okay i hope it will take the pictures yeah fine so we're taking the pictures so q it will gone so you can see here in the camera dot jpg it will take the picture of that okay that's really fine well okay so using that you can take the picture okay that's really fine so this is the whole detail so hope you enjoyed this one so this is the last project so it's better you can also check the video again and again and make this countdown timer if you watch this video until this point please please like this video and subscribe to this channel otherwise grandma will haunt you in your graveyard